Shuffle, shuffle. Yeah. Yeah, I'll fuck with that. I think at that point, that's part of the algorithm that TikTok accepts. Well, yeah, if, I mean, if you're like under 8% body fat and you decide to shake your ass and tits on TikTok, you're probably going to get famous. Really? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure that's what they go for. So what's your take on TikTok just assuming everybody's data? and Because, uh, you know, that's definitely a thing. Right? Oh, it's 100% a thing, but it, it's always one of them deals where it's probably never as bad as what you originally think that it's going to be. And if they want my low credit score and ba- and basically zero <laughs> bank account, then just take it, you know? The, the, when you, three years ago, you hit over a million views. What was your first video? How many views did you hit on your first video? Okay. So my first video, a lot of people don't know this. Um, see, when I first started out, I was, uh, I was doing it all off my personal page. Like I was really just messing with my buddies. I, I wasn't really like doing anything special. I was, it was when the Lion King, they started doing all those remakes with, with Disney and stuff okay. like that. And I made this video fucking with my buddy Possum. And I was like, if you think for one second, I'm about to go to the damn movie theater and watch a movie that was made 25 years ago that they just redone and pay $18 for popcorn, $12 for a Coke and $20 for a ticket. You are absolutely fucking correct. I am going straight in that bitch and I'll be sitting <laughs> in the first fucking row. And I will be in that bitch. And that one ended up with like 13 million views. And, um, but I, I was like, you know what, what, how long did it take to get 13 million? Like four days. That's gotta be creepy. We are like, I, I ain't gonna lie to you. I was like, uh, I was like, you know what? This, this might be that my, my shining moment. I think I peaked. Like, <laughs> like a lot of people peak in high school. I was like this tall and that wide in high school. And I couldn't even like buy a smell of a pussy. So I, 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 didn't, even, <laughs> I, I didn't really think too much of it. And then all of a sudden you're blasting in front of 13 million people. Yeah. Um, did did it want more? Did you want more? Did you want to go for more? I well, like, so I did that one, and that was like in October, right? And I didn't do another video until the spring the following year. I went to that black cookout, which was my biggest video ever. Like, bar none. People still come up to me like, you're the white guy that went to the black cookout. They don't know my name, but they're like real big on me going to the black cookout. I went there, and I did a video about it. And it was more along the lines of just messing with my buddy that I played football with who invited me to come to this cookout. And that went stupid viral. I think it had 760,000 shares, uh, 1.3 billion views. Like, it, it was way up there. Like, I was already on a grande status on that one. Didn't get paid for that one. Did, no. I, I didn't. That That's the one that um I was checking my messenger one day, and I had, like, 85,000 people on my personal page. And I was checking my messenger. I got a message from Facebook said, hey, look, you, you may have a knack for this. I'm your new Facebook manager. You need to create a business page. I was like, okay, how do I switch all the people from my personal page onto my business page? They said, you can't, you got to rebuild it. I was like, fuck. Okay. Sounds awesome. So I started, I started my business page, my public figure page, because comedian at the time wasn't like an option. Right. And I don't know how to go fix it. So I've started that and I just started doing videos. I reposted both of the ones that went viral and uh, just, I started sharing stuff from my personal page. I mean, from my business page to my personal page, trying to bring some of them followers over. Right. You know, and then like three months into it, they sent me a check and I was like, hold up, rascal. You're telling me that they're like, I, I can get paid for sitting in my truck talking shit in the driver's seat. I'm a fucking player. I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm in on this shit. And it, it really just kind of snowballed from there. What was um, the first thing you bought with that check? A new rifle. It was hunting season. Okay, what kind of rifle? Uh, Christensen. I, I, I splurged. And okay. That, and that was the thing. Like, I was broke as fuck whenever, um, like, my, 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 my family's always had decent money, but we had this, like, crude way of doing things to where, like, I get growing up poor sucks. I get yeah. that. Try growing up in a wealthy white family where you just pretend to be poor and eat bologna sandwiches because your parents and your grandparents have some kind of sick obsession with just, like, saving money in all aspects of life. Like, I didn't know that you could eat steak any way other than well done until I was like in college. So I had a, it's funny you say that. I was thinking about it earlier. My step grandmother that I grew up in Latimer, Marianne, uh, she used to go and get uh, expired food from crew thirds, like a couple <laughs> days old. You know what I mean? The bread. Yeah. And it was always like, she, she got some deals, but I remember growing up eating old bread, which it wasn't that old, but yeah, it was like a couple, it was a couple days out of date. Yeah. And it was, and I had a, uh, my stepdad also, we had to only run the bath water cause we're on well water yeah. like this much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking uh, God forbid the air conditioning actually kick on in the fucking oh, summer. That was yeah. seventy nine. <laughs> yeah, all, all the fucking I, I died. My house now stays sixty seven degrees 
year round. Year round. I refuse to like. I'm thinking about getting one of them clear boxes like they had in schools with the fucking lock on it, and just putting it at the house where nobody touched my fucking. Nobody can get it. Fucking right. So my AC went out a couple of months ago, and uh, I actually had to put. Th- I, or I didn't have to, but I put a window unit in my bedroom until I got it fixed. But then I started adding window units, and then I had three windows in there. I had three different window units in my bedroom, and it was like 62 degrees in the bedroom. It's I, fantastic. I almost didn't come out. I, mean, I was like, I didn't. I just wanted to keep well, it like that forever. Just hibernating. Yeah. Well, it's one of the best films when you go to like the old hotels that have the AC unit. Yes. And it, you can just turn it on when you check in. You turn it on. It's like as as you can go. Yeah, you bottom it up. You come back and you're like, good. Especially because you're you're. you're Usually trash when you're staying in hotels. I mean, that's like us on the road. You know, we're touring all over the nation now. And the first thing that me and my uncle Ronnie do when we walk in the fucking hotel room is thermostat. As low as it'll go. We really like it when the motherfuckers go to fifty. Yeah. <laughs> freeze it up. Dude, dude, freeze it up. Are there some that do fifty? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get it all the way down. Some of them they just have like that dummy lock on there where you think you're turning it down and you come back and then you're like, it definitely didn't turn down at all. Zach, so. what do you feel about Airbnbs versus hotels? I feel like Airbnbs are definitely more luxurious than they are. Um, the thing about it is, is with my with my with my way of traveling, we never know what time we're getting there. That that's the thing. And with Airbnb, I feel like you have to commit to it for more than like a day, or that you'll get a fifty dollar, hundred dollar, exactly. And that shit doesn't seem like a whole bunch, but it does kind of add up over time. So, like when we strike out here, like we're leaving, we're headed to Wisconsin next week. We have a show in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, and then the following night we're in Indiana. We don't have hotels booked. Me and me and Mark, we just get in the truck and just go. Just and if, go, if we just get it when you get there, just, yeah, just motel six it, man. You know, just just just, just <laughs> yeah, you're just, from Mississippi. You yeah, get that free breakfast though. <laughs> yeah, just raw dog it. Just you know, just head up. You know, they leave the light on for you. They say that in the commercial. They will do it. Fucking right. You go in there, sixty bucks. Go in there, get you some sleep. <laughs> you know, I mean, some we stayed in places on the road, and everybody's like, "Oh, you're touring now. You're doing all this comedian stuff. You're probably staying in five star hotels." I'm like, we got a hotel last night by the hour. <laughs> I mean, we we literally stayed in like a home hotel last night. They have the motels that you can rent for a month. Was this like that? Yeah, okay. it, it was more along the ones of like we went in there to go get a to go get a room. We were driving through. Uh, we was on our way to Wyoming, and uh, we have to leave like five days early because I, being as big as I am, and I got football injuries and shit like that. Like I can't ride in a vehicle for more than like ten hours. That that's fucking. It was like twenty seven hours to get to Wyoming. Yeah, that sucks. It, 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 yeah, I went to school there. Fucking terrible. It's a horrible state. It shouldn't even be one. There's, it, it literally just needs to like not be governed and just let people go deer hunt it. That, yeah. that, that's all that's there. But we're on our way out there, and I'm like, you know what? We're, we're just gonna fly. We're just gonna pop, hop, hop in here and go grab us a room because we golf on the way. That, that's what we do to get out and go do something. You know, we leave three or four days early, and I will ride for eight hours. Stop. Get us a bite to eat. Go play around the golf. Stay there that night. Wake up next day. Go do the same thing again until we get there. Because once Friday hits. Most of my shows are on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Every now and then you'll get a Thursday night. All right. Friday at noon hits, it's fucking game time. Like there's no fun to be had at all. You got sound checks, you got lights, you got set up, and we pull a merchandise trailer everywhere because I mean what's the crowds looking like right now at one of your shows? We've done some this year that were um up upwards of twelve hundred, but average about four hundred, five hundred people a show. That's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. I don't really like I, I, t- I toured with two other comedians, uh, Jesse Payton out of Houston, Texas, probably the hardest working comedian in the business. And Dustin Sims out of Alabama, who's also a Facebook uh, creator and stuff like that. And he don't give a fuck about anything. Like, he doesn't care if, if if he gets to perform or not. He just wants to come drink for free on the bar tab. Oh, yeah. So like and I, I tour with them and it's more along the lines of like. We have such different styles. Like 100% like Jesse's like this Metro really trimmed up, nice looking guy goes to the gym, eats healthy, all this shit. Me and Dustin are sitting over there like, where's pizza? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Gary, can you pull up this Jesse guy? It's a Metro guy. Yeah. Jesse Payton. I want to see this guy. I think, I think his Facebook handle is a Jesse Payton. Jesse is funny or Jesse Payton comedy or something like that. But he, he is by far, he works way fucking harder than what I do. Hey, Gary, why don't you drop that intro real quick and let's get that through. Yeah. Yeah, uh, too much. In- this is interesting. We're in. <laughs> Yo, I- we're live. We're we, live. We, we've I been thought live. we were talking. Oh no, we've been live. <laughs> Great. <laughs>
Oh, oh awesome. Uh-huh. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Kathy and Susie's Kids. Yep. I'm Jordan. That's him. Okay. Okay. Yep. That's, that's him. That's our boy. He's wearing a tux or is that a jacket? Oh, I don't fucking jacket. know. He wears, like a, he wears like a glittery Joker shirt on stage. Mm-hmm. And he does something similar to what I do. He's big into charity. He does wheelchairs for warriors. Okay. okay. That, that's his thing. So they, he sells his his stage worn shirt at the end of every show, gives the money to them. I sell mine and I give it to the research for the kids with cancer at St. Jude's or for veterans or what, whatever charity is tickling my damn ball sack that day. All right. You know, I, I try. That's one thing that whenever I started getting a little bit noticed and stuff like that, I was like, you know what? I, I want to use this platform as a. I want to help other people because I because I lucked into shit. I went to a black barbecue and the whole world lost their fucking mind. It was a bunch of white guys that went to a black barbecue. The only thing different between me and them is a, what were they serving? Ribs, fried chicken, pulled pork, macaroni and cheese, collard greens, baked beans, potato salad, and cherry pie. What was your favorite? Well, to be honest with you, I didn't get to fix my plate. That that was the thing. They gave me like a little bit of everything, right? And I'm scared shitless at this point because I'm gonna be honest with you. Because, like I said in my video, there's three white things at this cookout: it's the salt shaker, the napkins, and me. That was it. And I wasn't pissing off nobody's cooking there, so I ate it all and stuff like that. Like the two uh, aunties come up to me with two different kinds of potato salad. They had like a mayonnaise based and a mustard based. I was like, which one is better? I was like, y'all ain't trapping me. Mm-mm. I get mustard. Yeah, probably, but I'm white, not stupid. Like I'm not, I'm not finna <laughs> piss off. The yeah, auntie. you go with a, you go with a yellow mustard and a gumbo. Ugh. If you think for one second that the proper way to eat gumbo is not to take a scoop of potato salad and that's put, the only way I eat it, I will not eat it any other way. <laughs> salad, I'll be dead ass on with potato salad has changed my life. <laughs> it, it, multiple instances in my life, it's just it, it's completely turned every everything around, every meal around. What do you think about yellow mustard? I'm a white guy myself. I like you that. like the loaded potato salad, yeah, don't yeah, you? Yeah, like the one with the chives and all that shit. Man. No, I want that heavy Set mustard. Set that palate off, dog. Set that palate off. I want that heavy mustard one. Um, make the face like the bitter beer face whenever you're eating. And I want it like, I mean, I, I go about 30% in the bowl. Like, it's heavy. Oh, really? Yeah, it's, it's, it, you get a little bit, you know, and I want the gumbo super hot. Oh, okay. So you're a fatty like me, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, come on, dude. We're all, we're all pretty thick. I mean, all right. So we got Zach rushing in the house. For those of you who uh, don't know, for those of you who do, uh, say hello. Um, Zach, what's been up, dude? Touring. It, it's all I have time for anymore. Um, like I said earlier, whenever, you know, before I started all this, I was building that dirt track outlaw speedway up there. And that was going to be my main job. And then this whole thing came, and I'm not stupid. I know comedy is short-lived. It is. Um, nobody stays on top. Richard Pryor didn't stay on top. Jerry Clower didn't stay on top. Eddie Murphy didn't stay on top. None of these people. St- Kevin Hart, seven years ago, you couldn't mention comedy. Cat Williams, all these boys, they're, they're, they, they, they had their day in the sun. And then they just fizzled off. They made their money, and they left. You know what I'm saying? Because you can't – what happens in comedy is, like, you remember 10 years ago, Blue collar comedy swept the entire nation. Oh, yeah. It was redneck comedy. People got enough of it. They quit. They quit laughing at it. We're because talking about like Larry the Cable Guy, Larry the Cable Guy, Ron White, Jeff okay, Foxworthy, yeah. Billing Ball, all all them boys. They got together and did thirty minutes a piece and made a DVD about it. And I mean that they they fucked the entire country. Yeah, they broke the internet. They, they did. It was ridiculous. I mean, and then all of a sudden they're in movies and all and like major motion films and stuff. They made their money, and now they're sitting on a beach somewhere sipping Mai Tais, you know, with a senorita bringing them a damn another. Ron White was just out to Beau Rivage, though. He's still throwing it down. He's yeah, but still- Ron White is, is like a big spender. He's not really frugal, okay? Yeah. That, that dude's got, like, airplanes and buses and, like, a private island. and will feed it. Yes, he and yeah. so he said he's going to do that until he dies. When are you getting a jet? When I <laughs> – Believe it or not, me and my uncle were the guy that I tour with. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about it. I was like, fuck this. I don't want to be on the road anymore. Let, let's get an airplane. So I went to my manager, who's also my mom, and that was the only wrong was a great move on my part because, yeah. like, she put She's me got on, your back. Yeah, she does, and she put me on an allowance where, like, I'm not allowed to spend any of the money that I, that I make. I have like enough to buy like snuff and cigarettes, and that's it. What's your name? Yeah, ba- the ba- basically the basics. Yeah. And then uh, I went to her. I was like, "Look, I want to buy an airplane." And then me and Uncle are gonna go to um, we're gonna go to flight school. And we're gonna fly it to all the shows. He's she looked at me. She goes, "You're a fucking idiot." Like, yeah. like that's not happening. Oh yeah. No, I mean I'm thinking like I need to get to the point of fame that like you don't want to fly your own plane. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, like I, I want to get. I just want to walk out onto the private runway and just walk up and go sit in, in like in the back seat somewhere. And just have somebody fly me somewhere. 
I would be cool with a fucking tour bus. Well, I mean, if you're doing, if you're starting to ramp up your shows, you're going to have to do stuff where you can kind of keep up because you can't stay in a car. Yeah, you can't for a long, to drive five yeah. days at a time to get to. So you're going to eventually yeah. have to. Yeah, I'm get there in an hour, two hours. And like my my agent, uh, he's out of Houston. I'm, I'm signed right now with a company, uh, Atomic Music Group. Uh, they're out of California, but my agent lives in Texas, and. He's actually switching over to a, a new company called AMP. I don't know what the fuck advanced music production, I think is the name of it. And I told him, I was like, look, on my new contract, I want a tour bus. Like I have more followers than Hardy, uh, freaking Riley Green. All they have tour buses. I want a tour bus. I just want to pull up one time to a show in a tour bus and get out. Actually, fucking helicopter. But it should have your face on it or no. Do you want to be no, you need what to be have your face on it? What would you put on the tour bus? Hmm. That's that. I've never been asked that to be honest with you. I, I don't know. know. What's I, first? Yeah, I mean the questions that matter. The question, yeah, the 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 OGs. I'm thinking like probably just the name of the tour. Like this year is the Forgotten Breed tour because everybody thinks that, you know Southerners and stuff like that that we're a dying breed. We're not. We're just forgotten. They just forgot about our way of doing shit. But next year I already got my name for the tour, and I can't say like the whole name because it's uh it's, it y'all get flagged. Yeah, but it, it's, just, it's just fuck you, Joe tour. Okay. <laughs> it literally, it's going on the side of the trailer, and we're just gonna okay. pull, we're just gonna pull okay. it around the nation. What would you have in that? Like for me, if I had a tour bus, I definitely want Gushers, Culture Dill Pickles. This is serious, <laughs> and I think I'd have to have the Voodoo Zaps. Okay. Like these are a couple things I, that I, I need. need: sunflower seeds, sunflower seeds. Yeah, for sure. Um, Sweet tea. I think if I made it that big, I'd have to get a new pair of socks every day. That that's your thing. Yeah. Like you gonna make it famous to get new fucking socks and underwear. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to do it again. You know what I mean? I'm fine with shoes. Just unroll them, take the tape off. I want to take off my underwear and throw them away. That's how you know you made it. Yeah. Okay. Think about it. All right. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't. When say. you put a t shirt, a brand new shirt, or a brand new pair of underwear or socks, how do you feel? I mean, they fit different. They they, 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 <laughs> they, they, they make you feel not as fat. Yeah. I mean, I, you're speaking to the choir because I got pissed off about matching socks. My thing is, I hate matching fucking socks. I hate laundry in general, but matching yeah. socks is the fucking worst. I went into my house, I threw every sock away. I've done that before. Every sock. I bought black ankle socks and white tube socks. So I don't even have to look at them anymore. And they're all the same exact fucking socks. So you might right here. These are, they, I think these are Under Armour and these are Hanes. I don't know. These are not matching, but they look like they're matching. I'm they, saying I can't battle with that. <laughs> I think every man does. I mean, most men, it not was, every man, but still like, yeah, I, I throw my stuff into a big basket. And then whenever it's time, it goes on. But yeah, I cleared out a house I cleaned and uh, bought all new socks, same exact socks. I'm a big fan of the sweet spot on, on laundry day, because like if you wear a pair of jeans, right. And like you dried them. And they're a little bit too tight, but you wear them for like an hour and a half. They start fitting right. Yeah. So you come home, you you just went to Twin Peaks. You'll give you something to eat. You come home, you ain't got shit on them. They're not dirty enough to yeah. wash again. Yeah. But they're also not clean, so you don't need to put them back in the closet. So I just put them right next to the laundry basket. Yeah. That's, that's why I got a bunch of pants. There. So, so I got a right confession right now that I don't wear jeans anymore. I have fake jeans that have stretchy bands. So it's like khakis and jeans. Yeah, I got the stretchy bands now. Wow, is that yeah. what they're called? I guess. Yeah, they're, are they called stretchy? stretchy. I wear stretchy with ropes now. You could, they look like khakis, but honestly, they're PJs. <laughs> so you, you're just out there. <laughs> so you, you forget underwear that day. You're just fucking dick slinging everywhere. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Because I mean, I'm I fluctuate in weight. Because I mean, Emily, I think we need to throw away some underwear. But I got some still mediums in there, <laughs> and they're not they're not going to work. No, nah. I mean I, I love it when I put on underwear that it, like. If you're cleaning out old drawers, you go to the back of the back of the drawer one time. You got underwear from when you were skinny. You put them on, and the fucking like around your around your legs, they start popping and shit. Like, yeah, we're stretching these bad boys out. The problem is, you, you still don't throw them away when you're done. If you, <laughs> if you get with the like smaller underwear, you have to have gold bond because you're gonna like if because Mississippi, it's always humid. Like, yeah, I'm always sweating. About five minutes in, I'm sweating. <laughs> I try not to go outside that much. So got to. I have to. Yeah. I like this new breeze we got coming in, though. Yeah, that's nice. I mean, like, so we went up to, uh, we were in Greenville, Tennessee at Hazard Fest this past weekend. And you would think it's not that far, right? It's just Tennessee. But it's like on the northern border of Tennessee. All right. We went up there, left here, 98% humidity, right? <laughs> okay. Skin's feeling good. Everything's going right. And then we get up there. The first hour I'm at Hazard Fest meeting fans, signing shirts. My fucking nose just starts just just pouring blood. Like somebody punched me right in the fucking face. I'm like, what the hell is going on? There's nothing that we like. The, the napkins won't stop it or anything like that. I, I'm just saturating them. So I looked over at my sister and I was like, "Are you on your period?" And she's like, 
She was like, yeah, can you tell? I was like, yeah, you've been a bitch for the whole fucking ride up here. So, like, give me two tampons. So here I am in Hazard Fest, right? Okay. I'm performing at 6 o'clock on the main stage. I've got – there's 18,000 people there. Okay. And they're steadily coming through my damn merchandise booth, want me to sign shirts, take pictures and stuff. And there is at least 12 pictures out there right now with fucking tampons in my nose, and I'm just taking pictures. Were they extra like, large or they mediums? No, they were okay. mediums. I mean, apparently she's not a whore. She's nothing like a brother. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's one thing I always told her. I was like, if I was a woman, I'd be the biggest fucking slut. Yeah. Well, they got OnlyFans now. Yeah. Do you have an OnlyFans? No, I don't. Okay. But why but, not? Because yeah, why? I mean, I don't know. I don't have an answer to that question. You're all about making this this bread. That seems to be you've got the following. I feel like Can you imagine uh, you ranting shirtless? Jesus would, I would lose followers. <laughs> <laughs> There's like three women on this earth that are okay with me having my shirt off. It's like my doctor and like two other women that I haven't met yet. One that uh, I'm pretty partial to, but I think she's lying to me. What was, when was your first uh, show when you went on tour? Like what was the first show you ever did where you grabbed the mic and you just. Okay. So this is actually how I open up my show. Uh, like my show now is my uh, the story of my first show. I get a call right after the black cookout video okay. from a place in, called hubs pub in bond Terre, Missouri. Like you think Walmart is small. No, like hub, like like Bon Terre, Missouri, they have like four roads and it's A, B, C, and D, and that's fucking it. And there's one bar in the middle of the, of the middle of the town and it's owned by the mayor. Right. So he calls me up on the phone. He's like, Look, Zach, I think you got a real shot at doing this. We're gonna do two shows one night. You're gonna sell them both out. I was like, okay, cool. So I posted on my Facebook page. Of course, it sold it sold out because my first show ever. Like people come from everywhere to come see it. I'm on my way up there. And I'm like, okay, I'm going over my lines. I'm going over my lines. And I'm thinking, you know, this is, gonna, this is going to be like some kind of red carpet type deal. Well, I get to the hotel. It's December the 23rd in Missouri. We get to, I get to the hotel. I go in there. I'm laying down in the recliner, and I'm just going over my lines, just trying to remember something. I mean, I can rant about anything. I can't. Right. I mean, I, I, I can tell you, you know, this color is fucking room stupid. I, get, I talk an hour on it. But I wanted to, like, do an actual comedy show. The promoter calls me up and the owner. They're like, okay, we're ready for you. The way we have it set up is there's two entrances to this bar. And they they gated them both off like a WWE walk down. And they put it like a red carpet. I was like, this is fucking awesome. I'm going to show up. Okay. And it's going to be like, there's going to be signs out. I'm going to be on Snapchat stories. Women are going to be showing me their titties and shit. That didn't happen. But when I pulled up, like the janky ass promoter, like you would have thought that he would have gave me like some kind of badass truck to roll up in or like a blacked out Escalator Tahoe or something. This motherfucker sends a driver over to come pick me up and it's a Ford Flex. Hell like, yeah. I mean, like, and I'm riding bitch in the back of it. Okay. And we, we pull up to the fucking show and everybody's outside. They won't let anybody in until I walk in. So, they, I mean, they're going crazy and nuts and stuff like that. And everything's cool. But I step out. Well, we don't have ice in South Mississippi. We don't. Like, not not like hard ice. They will get slushy shit or like your grass or crack or something like that. But, like, I stepped out of the car, right? And it's like the first time in my life my boots have ever touched, like, black ice. And I just go heels to fucking Jesus in, in front of this entire like 500 people crowd outside the thing and just smash into, in, into the asphalt concussion, head bleeding, all this other type of stuff. They damn near had to drag me into the, into the center doors to get me into the show. And it was like, they, I had to do the show already cash a check. I mean, like a redneck is one of the people who thinks you know, money's something to spend right before you get it. You, you yeah, know, you yeah, know yeah, yeah. Hey, that, that's all of us. So I'd already catch the checks. I'm up on stage and I'm like, I'm like doing. Do you remember it? I remember it, but it, it, I got so drunk in order to like mask how bad I felt <laughs> it, that I, I, I'm pretty sure it was a fucking horrible show. I'm gonna be honest with you. And I took like 16 months off and I didn't, I, I was like, you know what? Stand up isn't for me. I'm just gonna make my videos in my truck. I'm gonna go hunting and fishing and stuff like that. And then uh, this past February, Dustin Sims called me up, boy out of Alabama. I was telling you about the creator. He said, look, man, I got a show in Baton Rouge going on. Ticket sales are low. I know you got a big following over there. Why don't you come hop on the show with me? Do 30 minutes. I was like, fuck, man, it's hunting season. You know, he's, he's like, yeah, just do it. Do it. it. It's a day after hunting season. Come on over to Baton Rouge and come do it. So, like, I have not thought about comedy at all. I just make my videos. To, like, I'll be riding down the road. I'll pull over on the side of the road, make a video when something comes to mind or if something happens to me or personal like experience, that. personal experience, you know, or I'll come out of the gas station or some shit like that. And something happened inside. I'll Triggered. Like, exactly. Triggered. I got to talk, talk about it right then. If not, I'm forget about it. And, um, he called me, he's like, come over to Baton Rouge, come do this comedy thing. 
I didn't know that his like production company was going to be there. Like his a the my agent now, but his agent at the time was there and and all. And apparently the show went really well, and they signed me to a freelance deal for this year, just just kind of see what if if I was going to pan out. You know what I'm saying? And it was like a month later, and we did um and we did another show in Tulsa, and it sold out. That they just they booked me 36 shows this year, dude. That's about us. I feel like I'm on the road constantly. Like I, I I'm never home. My dogs don't even know who I am. So let me ask this. All right, so content. I mean. You you're doing the rants. Are you are you writing your own content now? Are you writing jokes? You got people writing for you? I have never wrote down anything on no, paper. Not at all. No. Do you plan on it? I mean No. To you be see honest. the comedians now and they talk about like flexing their joke, I guess. I mean, I just listened to uh Rogan and um yeah. Segura and Kreischer and all those guys. They talk about it all the time, like writing jokes. And it's what you just said, like you gotta do it right then and there, you're gonna forget about it. Yeah, I've jumped out of the shower before. And like ran into and like ran to grab my phone. And it's not that I write jokes, but like I'll have an idea about something and I'll run to like to my phone and go just type a keyword in my notes. And that's all I need is a spark to remind me. Power, like a little point. Like a point. It's just, it's just a, it's a very, very easy, like just get back into that mindset type point. And it, I, I don't know. I feel like writing jokes because my, both of the people I travel with, Dustin and Jesse, they both write jokes. They have like, scripts like first time in baton rouge we were in the back room and jesse was talking about yeah i do 33 minutes and 44 seconds dustin does 47 minutes 30 seconds monk looked over at me and goes we wrote this shit on the way fucking here <laughs> okay i was like i was like yeah i'm not i'm not i'm not i'm not this into it you know what i'm saying i've been deer hunting and uh that's one of the reasons why like we have a big tour going on next year with another big time comedian I'm doing it for like 25 years. Uh, Chad Prather out of Texas. Y'all need to look, y'all need to look him up. Gary, can you pull his him up? I, don't, I have no idea. All these comedians are he, a few he, of them. A few of them. Chad uh, P R A T H E R. Yeah. Um. He, he's like big time. He he's toured with Larry the Cable Guy. He's toured with uh, Eddie Griffin. All these type of guys. And out they got this tour together, and we wanted to do like a like a new age blue collar comic. That's him right there. The, the cowboy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The sweet ass shirt on. Oh yeah, he, you know, he's he's a trip. He he really is. He um he he's political funny. All he all all his jokes are nothing but political, and he makes fun of the right side. Okay, like not the right side, but yeah, the, the he, correct side. The correct side. He makes fun of the correct side. And um, anyway, it was like it. They called me up. They're like, "Look, we want to do this blue collar comedy type deal. We're gonna call it the Buck Wild Boys." I was like, "Okay, cool. You know, how how long do I need to do?" And they were all three. We were on a conference call, and he was like, "Yeah, you're not um." You're you're closing because you talk way too fucking much. I'm a storyteller. Like I, I can't get up there and just ramble off these little quick like quips and stuff like that. I can't do it. I have to set up a story. Yeah, me and Jordan like teetered with the idea of doing it, and that's one thing I've kind of noticed. Is I was just like, I can tell stories. I'm better at a storytelling than than writing certain things. We sh- we're still gonna do it though. Yeah, we, I mean we have we technically do. I mean yeah. So our like our thing is, well, if we have an idea, like we'll see it through. Yeah, even if we're not good at it, we're gonna give it a shot. Try and like, so I have a I have a thing on my page, that, and this is just a social media. It's not really a hint or anything like that. It's what I do. Don't water down your brand. A lot of people say, you know, like I, I know countless creators: Kristen Scott, Josh Prey. Um, what's that boy that always does the uh, the dude dad p- people on Facebook? Um, the you betcha guys that drink all the bush lights stuff. They post every day i don't have that much to say i I really don't and i feel like if you're and what they're doing is they're beating the algorithm don't get me wrong they're raking in money like like it's ridiculous like they're they're making stupid money off of that but i'm i'm more along the lines i would rather give you quality than quantity like if i don't have anything to say that day like if i just woke up went to like got a coffee and came home and played with my dog like there's not a whole bunch that i can make a video about that you know what i'm saying now if i go to the gas station and this bitch walks in in a bikini and she's got a a DT six Rapala as a as a belly button ring. I'm probably gonna talk about it. Okay. You, you know what I'm saying? Good topics. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. Respect. <laughs> so you as I guess people watch as 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 hot. I am a huge people watcher. I am. I I I don't get drunk when I go out because for some reason there's this complex about if you're at a bar and you get drunk, whoever gets drunk wants to fight the biggest motherfucker in there. He does. It's just kind of true. The little guys will always go. They always go for the, big, for the biggest son of a bitch. And I am always the biggest son of a bitch in there. 
And I just, it got to the point that, don't get me wrong, four, four years ago, I'm in. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, Let's yeah. throw bows. Now, I got a little bit more to lose now. Yeah, getting old. Exactly. Yeah. What would you consider little, though, on, on height? Let's get that. Let's figure out the little. Yeah, you are. How big are you? For I'm, I'm 6'4", 300. Okay. okay. So who are the short people? What is their height? Let's it's, go down. I mean, I, I would say anybody under, like, or six foot or under, like, it, it, I'm probably getting in a fight with them. Okay. Hey, guys. Look, I'm five eleven. Yeah, I'm, you know, I don't like to fight though. I've been punched in the face. It sucks. I don't like. No. Nobody, nobody, nobody wins. In the fight. They, they really don't. Even if you beat the fuck out of me, next day yeah, your yeah. hand hurts yeah, yeah, yeah. and shit. You got paperwork to do. I got paperwork. sucker. I got sucker punched at a uh, Vu Marche a couple a few years back. Probably five years back. Did you deserve it? No. Okay. Did no. you know him? No. No. Man, I just, just got caught one coming. Huh? Two couple guys came out and they hit me in the back of the head and uh, they try to rob you. I think they were just drunk. And that's what I wanted. But to the know. other guy left his phone, and I'm uh, surprised Corey Chrissy didn't come out in his uniform. No, Corey Chrissy wasn't there. Saved the day. This like, is like probably is superhero six years. downtown Biloxi, though. Is he, yeah. This yeah. is probably six, seven years ago. Okay, maybe longer. Probably, probably <laughs> eight. But yeah, I got sucker punched. I got knocked out. I'm to the point in my life that I have like eight seconds of fighting left in. Yeah, me. that's about it. I run from stuff like that. And I, I'm saving that unless like somebody fucks with my woman or like cuts in front of me at Taco Bell or some shit. Yeah, but when they start really making serious. viral videos about people just getting punched. I mean, you can do it. It worked for World Star. Yeah. I mean, Kimbo Slice made a whole living off this shit. Oh, he really did. He really did. I mean, he was just in backyards just beating the fuck out of like anybody. He would challenge them to just show Remember up. Remember bum fights? Yeah. Yeah. Like that was crazy. But you know, anything's viral now. Like so, they have they've had some people on TikTok that like murdered murdered family members for like views. Have you seen that? So what do you consider viral? Because there, it has a definition. I don't know the definition, but I would say a lot. Like I would say over a hundred thousand views. Okay, so by Facebook's measures, YouTube, they're all it's a it's a standard. Viral is one million views in the first three days. And 1% of the views has to be shares. That's considered viral. So if you have. Oh, there's rules. I oh, wonder what the transition, because yeah. it didn't start that way. No, it didn't. There's like text used to be, they used to cost money. Now they don't, you know, it, it's it, all evolving. Exactly. It, it evolves. And see, if you're, if you're considered viral, like if your video is considered viral, the RPM, which is your rate per minute on your monetization on Facebook, YouTube, uh, Instagram, TikTok, all that type of stuff, it skyrockets. <laughs> Gone. And so, but you have to, you have 72 hours to get it to a million views. If you're, if you get a million views and you, and on hour 71 and you have 9,999 shares, it's Don't not qualify. It, it doesn't qualify. But the second that you get that one more share and it goes 10,000, your money goes to the roof. So what is, what is viral money? And does, talking? and does Facebook give you a plaque? Okay, go with the viral money first. That's no, it. no, yeah. Facebook. I got my YouTube plaque. I, I I do have that one. I got the quarter million followers one on that. Um, I'm I'm going for the gold. Uh, that's why I have a I have a hunting and fishing show coming out next year. Because you YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and it, they all have their avenues. Oh yeah, absolutely. They're the route. That's it. Yeah. Facebook and TikTok people go to for entertainment. Um, Instagram they go to basically for entertainment. YouTube they go to for information. That's why you see all of your chefs, all of your how-to videos. All of that stuff is on YouTube. None of that shit's on Facebook. And if somebody says, hey, look, I got to change the headlight in my car, well, just YouTube it. They don't say Facebook it. Right. They don't say TikTok yeah. it or nothing like that. YouTube it. So I'm going to I'm gonna take South Mississippi, and I'm going to show everybody how we do things, how you can go out here in our back bay, and you can catch largemouth bass all day on live shrimp. You can't do that anywhere else in the nation except right here. I'm going to show everybody how we duck hunt down here, how we deer hunt, the way that we look for signs and shit. And I'm going to start doing a little traveling across the nation. I'm going to tone back on the tour in a little bit. Just pick bigger cities and do one central location instead of three in the same state. What is, What do you think? So, like, Matt was asking the question of, like, money making. Like, some of these guys, what do you think they're making on Facebook? Like, I mean, if it, let's say a video has got, in a month, 30 million views. Okay. I've had I've had this, so I, I have this answer. Yeah, but nobody's ever asked me that in, like, in, in like a public setting. Yeah. Okay. I will. I, I'll. I'll do it like this. I'll tell you this. Me and my current status right now, I get seven cents per view. So do the math. Can't do math. I'm the same Martin. <laughs> Garrett, can you look that up? Can you look that up? How, so that, how, is that your what is it? RPM or your rate per minute? Yeah. So what it is is what do you think you hit on Facebook a month? Average, yeah, 
money wise, uh, in between twenty five and fifty grand. Yeah, I mean that's amazing. It, 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 it is, <laughs> but here's the thing: like you don't get to keep all of it. You know, what you I'm gotta saying? pay taxes. Oh my god, they eat you up with tax. It's like seventy percent taxes. That's absolutely. You think they know what they're doing there? Well, here's the thing: like, like is there a Facebook tax that they throw in, or they take something? No, but they take ten thousand dollars a month out of your check for insurance. What kind of insurance? For your page insurance. See, in 2019, I had like 40,000 followers. I was telling you about rebuilding my yeah. damn, like my. Share, sharing your uh, personal. Over that's account. right. So I had like 40,000 people on my business page. I had like 100 grand on my personal page. And yeah, I couldn't get them to, <laughs> I could not get them to switch over. Yeah. I couldn't do it. And um, I, I got my page hacked. Like somebody sent me one of the messages like, hey, look, we'll pay you this much if, if, uh, if you'll. Uh, We'll put ads on your page for you. I was like, fuck yeah. I was like, how much are you pay me? They're like, we'll pay you $500 a day. I was like, holy shit, I'm in. Because I wasn't monetized at this point. All right. So I clicked the link and typed my Facebook information into it and poof, gone. Like, I have no say so at all what goes on on my page. I've never told this story. This is, this is actually kind of cool. Um, when they got on there, I had like 45 videos on my on my page. They went back and just started resharing and resharing every one of them to every page across the Facebook. And I wrote into Facebook and stuff like that. And I was like, look, I want my page back because I'm watching them. Like I can still see the money that they're making. Right. Because during the time that they got it hacked, I got monetized. Right. And I can see the money that they're making. And they brought me from 40. This is in a week. They brought me from 40,000 followers to 280,000 in a week because they're just sharing the fuck out of all my videos. And I can't get it back. Finally, I get I get the shit back. But it, to be honest with you, it, it was stressful. It was because I mean I could have rebuilt it at that time. Rebuilding a three uh, three million page now that that would be terrible. Yeah, you know what I'm saying that would that would take years, and you probably can't do it. You're, it'll never be as good as your OG page. So now Facebook has this thing where I have a contact there. I get to talk to them once a month on the telephone. You can email them back and forth, and they were like, "Okay, look." If something was to happen to your page and we can't recover it, do you want to put an insurance policy on it? And I immediately, no hesitation. I was like, yes, absolutely. What does that mean? But, 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 <laughs> but, yes. but also, yes. <laughs> okay. They're like, okay. So what it means is, is if something was to happen to your page, we have to give you X amount of dollars to where it will compensate for the money that you were going to make on the page. I was like, okay, sounds good. And, I, and I'm thinking, okay, you know, $500 a month. You know, two thousand dollars a year, something like yeah. that. Ten thousand dollars a month is one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year. You're you're paying. What's the insurance. payout limit? Huh? What's the payout limit of the ten page? million? Ten million. Ten million. Whew. I wonder if it, it's. I wonder if they're outskirts because we have an insurance agency, Golden Gulf Insurance Services in Biloxi. But I wonder if they're like. If it, did they outsource it or is it Facebook's insurance company? Mm, good question. I don't mm. know, to be honest with you. I, I would ask. These are the questions you need to be reading. This is like questions because like right? they can have a contract where you're paying in, insurance from another carrier. Like no, no, I know it's all internal. It's okay. all it's all Facebook internal. And basically, what it is is if like they have a big fucking oops, and and my page just gets taken down for yeah. some reason. Or what if it got hacked again? Exactly. And, and what it does is, it to me it gives me a sense of closure. If something was to happen to my page. I know now that they're they don't want to pay me that much money. Right. Yeah. So they're gonna they're gonna have the entire team working to bring my page back. Because Absolutely. I mean it's not so much about the money, don't get me wrong. I mean, like, okay, so if I get a let's say I have a half million dollar a year, right? I'm I'm walking away with like one twenty. Like I'm gonna be honest with you, taxes each year because they they don't take taxes out. And then once you take um once they ten ninety nine me and you pay for your insurance. And so like that, you're walking away with like 120, which is still amazing. It yeah, is. yeah it's not money. do shit. I mean, it, it, for, I'm sitting in my truck. Well, I, I can't say you can't say not doing shit because you're yeah, you are doing shit. You yeah. are like mentally creating and, and and have these like the effort you put in, and you have a like a personal life. Like you go out now, people recognize you. Yeah, it's a trade off. Yeah, it it it's a blessing and a it's curse. like did you really join the Illuminati? <laughs> Are you in Garrett? Do you think that's real? Because I mean, what if Zach is a part of the Illuminati? That's that's how I got here. That's what. That's that's exactly how it happened. So let's go through some of these comments, Garrett, because we have we need to. There's a a bunch of comments. (laughs) Any good ones? That's Paul. Oh, it's probably just a bunch of bush bush lattes. It's just but a bunch of potato salad is terrible. I see you, Mike West. Okay, Josh. He can Zach give him a shout out, Josh. Yeah, Josh Wessel. Yep. Yeah. What's up, Josh? 
Ooh, got some uh, potato salad is terrible. So is so is direct auto. Go buy your vehicle there. <laughs> Michael, fuck off. Okay. <laughs> potato salad is life. Okay. It changed my life. It is. What's up, Aunt Charmaine? Okay, we got some good. Jeff Fox, my dude, Zach. Yeah. Damn, dude. Keeping it real. Got some followers. I tell you what, I, I like I, I like I like y'all set up. Like I like the way that you can see it and everything. That, that it comes it wasn't tape. always like that. And like we didn't have the TV. We ended up having the I mean, we built so much. Yeah, you got started start for so small. little. That yeah, yeah, futon yeah. was uh that is eighty dollars from uh James Bennett out of St. Martin. How many people have been fucked on this on this I don't at least a few two. Awesome. I, I can feel it. it's sticky. Might I, be 43 after tonight. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm it's still, I'm still right the biggest motherfucker here. <laughs> and then and then we take this right here. We gotta give a shout out to my set that's Scott Levenway. Yeah, we, the uh, table. He he is uh seven in his seventies, but he built this table when he was eighteen years old. This coffee table, really, and he just got it. This is our table now. That's badass. Yeah. So we got a little character to the studio, man. It's it's definitely transformed a lot. I will tell you this: it's like you talk about just starting small, working your way up. So with my outdoor brand, right? I, I got Bass Bucks and Birds Triple B Outdoors. Yeah. And we we do a big thing. Every, Here, pull this page up. You have a, you have to have a website for that. I mean, there's a, there's a website for it, but it's just it's just a basic ass website. Yeah, I, we do so much stuff with with different charities and stuff like that. We don't concentrate. Yeah. To be honest with you, we can't feel the demand of what we have. Do you have your own warehouse? Yes. You make your own stuff. Yes. Oh, dude. What, what are you he, making? He's got a factory. The, uh, ba- uh, yeah, <laughs> basically, 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 so you know, it, it, it's it's one of them deals where we like we got we just did a photo shoot this week with all like we're, we're doing all of our own pictures and stuff like that, and we just switched over. We were on Shopify. Okay. Which was the, the that was our that was our home base. Yeah. We switched over to Wix. Couldn't use any of the same pictures for copyright and stuff like that. So we just, we're switching everything over. But we're trying to go more along the lines of like uh, we had that Scuba Steve. Yeah, that deal. Just simple shirt. That that's the thing now is just simple shirts. Just with a little bit, there. little razzle dazzle on it. But I remember like people come up to me when I'm on tour, and they're like, "Man, you ain't got to do nothing. You sold you sell so many shirts. You can't even get your hats. They stay out of stock." And that. I was like, "Man, you 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 weren't there." You know, say you weren't there when I had this idea. Like I drew this logo right here on a napkin at the deer camp, drunk as fuck on wild turkey. Woke up the next morning. Like 101? The 101. Okay. Yeah, 100% 101. <laughs> and I, I, I drew it on a napkin, and the next day we woke up, it was on the card table, and I was like, what is this? That's got to pass the sober test. Me and Jordan do the same thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you write it down, man, you know, fucked up. You don't want to see that wall over it. there. Yeah, yeah, you come back to it and you're like, oh, yeah, maybe if, it, if it's good, sober, then you know you go with it. That's it. And I saw it and the boys were like, yeah, you kept ra- like rambling on last night about this outdoor round you're going to start where it's called bass, bucks, and birds, and there's never an off season because you're always fishing, hunting, turkey hunting, duck hunting. I was like, okay. So I, I, like, I was working for 300 bucks a, a week at the time. I had enough money to buy 12 hats. I, I went to a, a local uh, uh, embroiderer and I, I gave him this napkin. I was like, can you make this into a hat? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly how it went. He looks at me, he goes, can I clean it up? I said, please. <laughs> and it was a print shed on 49, uh, James out there, their artist. And he drew it up for me and he made me 12 hats. Well, I only had enough money for 12 hats. I gave my dad one, me one, my grandpa one, and my two cousins one. So I had s- seven left. I gave five away. And I sold the other ones for like 25 bucks a piece, just to people that I know that wanted to just help out. Uh, so I sold them and I was able to buy 24 with that. So I sold all of them 24 and I bought 48. And I, and I never took, I never took a cut from my company for like the first 26 months. And I just kept on rebuilding and putting every dollar like back into it and back into it. And now the warehouse, Jesus Christ, there's so, there's so many hats and so many shirts. And what shit. is the, your largest order? We, uh, we did a shirt. Um, I know it's out of stock. I don't know if, they, if it's on the website. Guys, anymore. you're never going to get it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did a shirt called the evolution of the second amendment. And uh, what it is, it, it's like, it starts at the, the Revolutionary War, their rifles, and it goes to the Civil War, and it goes to the, the Vietnam War and the Korean War, and, and all the way down, and it, it has all the wars on it and the rifles that we used, all the way to the um, the modern-day AR. And on the magazine of the modern-day AR, I just put FJB. And you know, y'all, 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 yeah, know, yeah, y'all yeah. know what that means. <laughs> it's like a little hidden tidbit in there. And I'd said that I got on there, and I showed the shirt, and I couldn't talk about, like, exact because of, guidelines and shit like that i was like i'm just letting y'all know i'm doing this for my old uncle joe just letting him know that i'm still thinking about him and, and so just i ain't forgot about you you're still you're still an idiot and uh every one of these shirts uh that are sold 
we'll do uh we'll feed a veteran for a day which is the same with every item on i love that concept i i, I love it I where did that's that come from i mean i'm out of all that's the really cool you had to pick how'd you get that one i went i had some leftover money one one month in a, in a charity fund and i was in tax trouble this is this is real as it gets i was in tax trouble and my tax guy told me he was like uh he's like you need to donate some money i said okay to who he said uh what do you support i said bass fishing He's like, okay, you can't give it to them. I said, fuck. And he was like, well, uh, are, are you are, like, are you a patriot? I said, absolutely. I, he said, aren't you in Biloxi? I said, yeah. He said, well, y'all have a veteran's home down there for their for, and, and stuff. Thank you, buddy. And um, and he said, go down there and go see if they may need some help. So I went down there, and I, I went into the, uh, to the cafeteria. It was the only person I could find that would talk to me. And I was like, do you? Like, do y'all need like a donation? And they were like, "Sorry, I mean, we're, we're government funded, but I mean, to be honest with you, like the the, the government meals that they give us, it's like these these veterans, they just eat what we have." And I went down and looked at it, dude. It looked, it, it was like MREs and shit. You know what I'm saying? It was just basic elementary cafeteria food type deal. And I got to thinking about it. I was like, these men fought for our country. Like they went overseas and, and stayed in bunkers and stuff like that, and they come home and we don't take care of our veterans at yeah, all. No, you know, it, we, 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 like the we don't. We've, we're more worried about relieving college uh, debt, yeah. college or, debt than or, we are, or funding other countries. Exactly. You know, yeah, we're <laughs> yeah. fucking kicking ass at that part. Of it. We're yeah. probably leading the nation in donations. Can you imagine man. just a fraction of that money just was stayed here to help the veterans? <laughs> it, it, it'd be ridiculous. We have them living on streets, and it costs two dollars and eighteen cents a day. To feed a veteran, really, it, and that and that's not like flaming yawns and shit like that. But that's a good pork chop, a a, a snack pack, a pack of crackers, well, a fruit I'd roll. Imagine up. though, what you're talking about is it, anything's better than two slices of bread and probably a bologna sandwich. A little, little, or, don't get me wrong, I fuck up on crustables. Yeah. I, I really do. The peanut butter and jelly. Oh, we do. You, be I, I do. I nuke them. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I do too. But if I had to eat this shit every day out of necessity, it would probably be. I probably wouldn't be as amped about it. Yeah. The only thing I'm addicted to is ramen noodles. And I know it's a okay. So well, I had this conversation last night with my, with, with, my, with my woman, and I don't know when ramen noodles started becoming like a full meal. Or is it ramen? I'm it's, saying, ra- oh. it's ramen. I've always said ramen, but it, it, it is ramen. Like these people are taking ramen noodles and they're, they're just making them into like full out meals. They put like pork spirals and stuff in them and boiled eggs and, and all do it here. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, we we make it fancy, okay? Yeah, fancy ramen. It's two dollar fancy. Yeah, because we. I mean, sometimes we try to budget right now. You know, prices are going up, so we'll do like a you know nighttime breakfast. Yeah, we will do a ramen, a little fancy ramen with an egg. Maybe get some ham in there. You don't know. You, you really don't know. See, I'm I'm big on Brenner breakfast for dinner. Oh, that's what I had last night. Was it last night? Dude, yeah, egg, think, yeah. egg sandwiches. I just put a hibachi grill in, in my house. Like I'm in the middle of a remodel right now. What do you think about? Are you uh? Are you white bread or you you wheat bread? I don't care to be to to be honest with you because if I I get in moods like today I'm on this health kick right now because I went on tour for like a week come back like 13 pounds heavier I was like fuck getting fat yeah so far food bro (laughs) exactly so I come back home I was like I'm I'm eating healthy my version of eating healthy and like somebody who's actually actively trying to lose weight is completely different like my version is I didn't have a fruit roll up today and I had wheat bread on my subway okay yeah. (laughs) I feel not like that you walked or ran a mile or two. I, mean, I go to the gym and shit, but there's not a lot of cardio done. I don't really speak Spanish. I mean, we got some dirt. Keep what's going on with the dirt track? People uh, open or is the dirt track open or did it ever get open? Yeah, it's open. Yeah, it's open. We've been racing for years. Um, yeah, two, so you had that's how I first met you out there. Yeah, when you was just a young whippersnapper, he's out there selling beef jerky, Bull peanuts, motherfucker. Uh, both. <laughs> I, did you dance some beef jerky too? I, I did. did I did. Yeah, uh, that was uh, my dad owned a track for like ten years and. He gave me that little snack shack, and I can make my own money with it. And I'm like, oh, this my tits. You know, what was the number one seller? Bull peanuts. Are you sure? By far, by far, I make some bomb. I mean, I used to peanuts. pack that place out. Yeah, it, it, it was it was a smaller racetrack. So I it, mean, I remember there being fights in the back and all kind of. Like oh things. yeah, that hasn't changed. Red, <laughs> Redneck's gonna be Redneck's. Then we, we when I went to college, my dad got bored because he didn't have anything to do. He's retired. He decided to start building this monstrosity of a racetrack in George County. It's like a half mile. It's humongous. It sits over 100 acres. It takes 57 people to run it. Like, wow, that's all, a lot. It, 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 it's stupid. It really is. But it um, it makes for some good racing. I think, uh, yeah, we have – make sure I'm on the right one. Yeah, 
uh, Scooters for Hooters is is is, our, is this coming weekend? Yep, October yep. one. October one is the Scooters for Hooters. Yep, there it is, right there. Um, let's go it, ahead and hit them. Hit the plug on that. We got Scooters for Hooters. Uh, so they're doing a uh, Outlaws Speedways doing uh, October one. This and then they're doing the, the Poker Run at Harley on the fifteenth. Mm-hmm. Um, I will will definitely put a link tree in there for for the event. Uh, and then we got uh, Rocking the Tie Ties on the thirtieth. Right. Yep. Ground Zero. Yep. Uh, then we got October one. We got downtown Gulfport. That's gonna be a pr- pretty dope. Yeah. Th- and see, I, I don't get to go do any of the cool. You should shows. come. I can't. I, it's October one. I'm at the race. What, what times it run at? When's it in? Uh, I get there early. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of shit I got to do before that. But like this, this so we had it scheduled as Open Wheel Madness, which we had the Sprint cars coming in, the Haas Sprint cars. We had uh, Open Wheel Modifieds, and we had Limited Modifieds out of Baton Rouge. We were gonna run. And just do it as an open wheel type deal. It's just a different style of car. And I've got calls this week from people out of tennis. I mean, they're coming from all over to come race this just for, for the for the endorsement. You know what I'm saying? Showing what it is with uh, showing breast cancer awareness. Uh, support they just want to be stuff. a part of it. They want to be a part of it. That's, That's one awesome. thing I will say about country people and like and like good down home country boys is they 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 want to they want to win. Like there's we actually have one of the better uh, sprint car drivers in the country that live here and like in Biloxi. Is they, uh, his name is Shane Morgan. He's the Biloxi Bandit. So, yeah, Hughes on Shane. my board. Is he? Yeah, so Hughes been in there. So Shane is his buddy. Yeah, I, I know Hugh very well. Hugh's going to be there October 1. Yes. Um. Yeah, He's he's been on our board since for the last three, four years. He's one of our – I mean, he is gung-ho. He's like a brother. He, he's a good guy. He's been with Shane for a long time. And it, is it, Shane that impressive? Shane is that impressive. Wow. He, he is. Is that it, dude? He just, he needs a wheelbarrow to carry his nuts behind him. Is like he, when he's he like Cole Trickles at it. Cole Trickles. Uh, Cole Trickles. Yeah. yeah. From uh, Days of Thunder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cold, yeah. So Shane's equal. Okay. Shane doesn't have a lot upstairs. I love Shane. He's one of my best friends in the world. He really is. He just don't have a lot of common sense. He knows fast. He's got two speeds. Wide fucking open. Off. That, yeah. that, that That's it. And, that, and, and, and that's what you, that's what you need. To win. And, you ain't yeah. first your lives. Yeah, but I don't want to go that fast. I mean, that, that's just that's my. I, I I like watching them. You know, do you ever do destruction derby? It's one of my favorite games. <laughs> we, PlayStation one. Yeah, PlayStation sure. one. Right next to Tony Hawk. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, no, the Pizza Hut version. The, yeah. <laughs> the one you get one level. <laughs> exactly. Just the warehouse. That's all. That's the only one you get. No. Um. We we used to do demo derbies out there at Minge at our, our old track. And, but to be honest with you, now I could do it. It's not worth it. it. It's really not. Tear everything up. No, it's going to be insane. It, it, to be honest with you, it's not even that. It's the cleanup. Like, you tell them all, take all the glass out of the cars, right? Uh, just body and and gut everything. But they don't do that. They they leave taillights in there, and they leave glass in the back and stuff like that. That's and they, when the fans cheer. Yeah, exactly. And they go out there and beat each other up, and then I'm out there the next day. Well, I'm not going to do it. I'll be dead ass. Honestly. I'm like, I got people for this. But they're out there picking up little glass shards and stuff. And so all I can think about is the next time I have a big race, one of them glass shards is still sitting there, and it hits somebody in the in the face mask, goes straight through and cuts their eye out. Yeah. Do you that, think we should uh, get Zach to turn the Speedway in one weekend and just turn it to a jousting competition? We've seen these at, at the LARP events, the Pirate Festival. They do actual jousting at Beauvoir. Like a Knight's Tale? Yeah. Like, remember the movie Knight's Tale? I, I remember, yeah, that they, Black Knight. They do jousting. They do that there. They do actual jousting. You should definitely do that at Speedway be like, you're not going to break any glass. You're going to mean some chest. <laughs> okay, that 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 may be a that Game may changer. be something I might be interested in. Just something different. Well, know? just jousting. Like, I mean, have you ever gotten out there in the cars and raced? Or yeah, I, I used to race back when I was younger, and then I built a uh, a late model for this year because I thought I was going to race it. Not enough time in the world. I don't know enough about the upper echelon type cars. So, what kind of car are you talking about, Garrett? Can we pull the cars up because I I need to know like. Because you can really mess up when you talk about a certain car. Yeah, so you got Sprint Cars, which is a go-kart with a 1,000 horsepower motor in it, okay. is what it is. And a big wing on top because they literally have so much horsepower that when you hit the gas, the front two wheels will come off the ground if you don't have downforce. Okay. And then you have late models, which is more of like a stock car type deal, but no, nothing's going to touch the speed of a Sprint Car. You just, you just can't do it. Like, that's a Sprint Car. Right okay, that's what Shane drives. That's what Shane drives. That, yeah. that, that, that's exactly so right. So that ramp thing right there, you're saying that that provides the downforce to stop it. That's right. Up. This is what I, this is what I wanted to race. I've always been a big fan of the late models. They they've got thousand horsepower motors as well. It's just a different type. Yeah, H- House of Tux has their car. Yeah. Th- now that's a that's um that's one of them, right? 
No, House of Tux is a uh, modified. That is a uh, oh my god, Chase Holland. Yeah, Chase Holland. Yeah, that's Adrian's son. Uh, he he runs a dirt modified, which is what is going to be at the track this coming weekend. Okay. And um, yeah, the, the Chase actually won. We had a big race for the for the Fallen Fifty. For our, we always do it once a year around September 11th, just to remember everybody who fell oh, yeah. and and all the military and stuff like that. We had five thousand dollars to win. He come up there, dude's like nineteen years old. Just, waxed everybody's ass had like half a track on everybody dude has actual uh his old his gear safety gear is a suit a tuxedo yeah his, his fire his fire suit is like it, it looked it looks like yeah, his mom out. i like it in gulfport the house tux uh-huh. that's his mom okay mm-hmm. so she's cool i mean adrian was cool and, and chase actually he, he doesn't just have the money to be good he is a good driver I, I, i'll give him that they have content too so, i mean they've been doing their own little shows they've and- got I think thirty or forty thousand people on there, and all they do is racing. Like you got to think, like dirt racing is a is a cult following, yeah, by far. It it, it is. It, you have different aspects of life. People who like dirt track, they only like dirt track. Fuck NASCAR. Like 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 they, they, they fucked up when they took. That's the a cult in itself too, though. Not anymore. No. They they took the rebel flag out of it. Yeah, and that that pissed a lot of people off. That's why you see a lot of your NASCAR drivers now that are going back to dirt. Because it's like the the OG racing way. Well, if they pump enough money, though, sponsors will come, right? Like, that, that's right. The view sponsors will come. Yeah, I mean, and, and see, they won't put dirt racing on um on like national television, like Fox or anything like that. But they have streaming services like uh, Dirt Now or stuff like that that you pay them a yearly subscription. You can see all the races. They go. Are you guys go. streaming any of y'all's races on that? We don't yet because we are so far out in the woods that we don't have internet. No internet. No, but they just <laughs> ran fiber optics down that road. So you need it. You need it. Hopefully, in this, a, the new setups change everything for us. Do they really? Yeah. It's it, like you're gonna go. Yeah, it was that it's fast. Like life before and a life after. It's weird. You could be a gillionaire. A gillionaire. Yeah, that's what, new. What, oh, you are, could he be? You need a shirt for that. <laughs> a gillionaire. A gillionaire. Jesus, Garrett. Bro. Do you need a beer, bro? I feel like do I need to bring you a beer? He's good. He gave, he gave, he gave the thumbs up. <laughs> I'll bring you some beer, Garrett. I see. I see Hugh on there now. Just Shane Morgan. That dude's like a diehard. He's a ride or die. All right, Drew Edgecombe says, tell us about the Stingers. What's that? Okay, Stingers is our intro-level race car, and anybody can race a Stinger. Dude, we need to do that. Okay, should, should it, we take the Scion? It, it, it's a four-cylinder front-wheel drive car that you literally take and put a roll cage in it and knock the windows out, and you can come race. That's it. That's, That's it. it. It's, you got to have no skill. You can't do this. Just style. a flatbed trailer. Yeah, I mean, just something to get. You can drive it there if you want to. You can be street legal. Where's the roll? Where do you get these roll cages at? Redline, red, redline roll cage. You can order them, and they just fit right into the car. You just okay. wear them in. Okay. We get our own car. You can build this. We car. sponsored a car, Carfish and Beer, one time. It didn't really. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it's probably raced out. And guys, if you share that. this, we'll get we will give away a crawfish and beer hat. Gary, can you show one of our hats? I don't know if we even have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to start wearing merch more. You should really oh, wear your merch. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 right here, right here, guys. The crawfish and beer. There you go. You should at least rep your brand. <laughs> uh, that, that, <laughs> We're not very good at it. Exactly. We're learning. This We're trying is, to, but this is our figuring it out. This is our nonprofit. This is Carter Champions. Okay, I yeah. got you. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's it. I go to my closet now, and the majority of the things. So we make our own merch too. So I just wanted to make a. Uh, Upside down, a uh, pink dress front hat where it just says, "You can tell." <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's it. Uh, I see. Y- y- y'all, y'all are working on it. it it's <laughs> work in progress. You'll, you'll get there, man. I'm telling you. And that's one thing. Uh, like, okay, people, you, if you own a company, if you own a, a a small company that y'all make twelve shirts a year, somebody is coming to you for sponsorship. It's gonna happen. I had some people from the racetrack. They wanted to come to me and say, "Hey, Zach, um, how, will you sponsor me five hundred dollars?" And I'm like, okay, for what? And I said, oh, for, for my car, I want to buy. I want to buy two rear tires for my car for this season. I said, okay, that sounds good, but but for what? They just look at me like I'm fucking stupid. I'm like, don't come to me asking me for five hundred dollars for me to give it to you until right. so you can put a sticker on your car. Come to me, ask me for five thousand dollars, and tell me how you're about to make everybody that you know wear my brand. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like we had this. This is one of my favorite stories, and this just happened last week. Um, you know, bass fishing is like a, it's a big thing now. It's like, it's all through high school. It's all through, they have yeah. high school fishing yeah, teams. Didn't have that when we were kids. Fuck, no, I never played football. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry guys. I got to go practice. Where are you going? Bluxy river. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds yeah. odd. No sweat. I'd be way fatter. Okay. And these two kids, they're uh, in seventh and eighth grade, local kids. Their dad called me up. Actually, he didn't call me up. He made them call me up. It was like, Mr. Zach, 
we have a bass fishing team. Uh, we're fishing for Diaberville this year. Would you be interested in sponsoring us? And I said, okay, I'll tell you what, uh, meet me in my office tomorrow at, uh, when you get out of school. So it was like 4.30. And I talked to their dad. He said, I'll go pick them up, bring them right down there. And I already made up in my mind that I was going to sponsor them like 500 bucks, right, to get the brand out there and stuff, yeah, yeah, stuff yeah. like that. They came in and I sat, and they sat down, and something just triggered an idea in my head. And this is how quick this shit happens. I looked at him. I said, okay, if I'm going to give you this money, how are you going to sell my merchandise? And they just looked at me. I mean, we're talking like a 13 year old and a 14 year old. Like they didn't, they know nothing about corporate America. Right. But they need to learn because schools don't teach you that school. They don't teach you enough. School, school trades, they, yeah. they don't teach you anything about life. They didn't teach you how to balance checkbooks, how to do taxes, but thank fucking God. We know how to do the Pythagorean theorem. That's very important. I use that shit every day. Okay. Yeah. And, and they're sitting there. I was like, I'll tell you what, boys, I'll make y'all a deal. I'm going to give you $500 of sponsorship, but I'm going to give you a business opportunity. They looked at me. I said, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to create a code on, on my website, DHS, Diablo High School, DHS Bass. Y'all go out there and you push my merchandise. You push my brand. You let everybody know that it helps out veterans. And for everybody that orders an item off of my page, off of my web, off of my website and uses your code, I'm going to give y'all a 15% kickback on profit. So if y'all want to make money, y'all want to make more money, you're going to help me. This is how corporate America works. Absolutely. I'm going I'm going I'm going to I'm going to give you an opportunity to make money or you can take my $500 and run and if I don't sell anything next year when you come back to me for a sponsorship, I'm going to tell you no. And I did tell them there was one stipulation. They cannot wear another hat. If you go if, if I see them out and I told their dad this too. I said if I see them anywhere other than a baseball game where they're in uniform and they have a ball cap on, it better not be a hook hat. It better not be an AFCO hat, anything like that. It has to be my hat. I want you to rep my brand. That that's and that's the same way I do all the way up to like the Bassmaster Circuit. Like next year, I'm sponsoring a, a Bassmaster boat. One of the one of the pros is going to fish it. That's the same conversation I'm having with him. So it yeah. all instilled you right then with the kids. Like, it, 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 it got it, you where you're at. It, it, it like it, it it sparked something. I was like, you know, I can I can give them five hundred dollars. They can go fishing. You know, they can have a little gas money. This that, or I can give an opportunity. I like that. that. That that's that's the thing. For people pray all the time. They're like they pray for money. God ain't gonna give you money. He's gonna give you the, the opportunity to make money. Yeah. He's not. You pray pray for health. God ain't gonna give you health. He's gonna he's gonna give you the opportunity to be live a healthier lifestyle. It's just you got to meet him halfway at, at all times. And I feel like that's one of the things that we've lost in this nation is the ability to to pull your pull your share. You know, you know what I'm saying. Everybody wants something for nothing. The entire world's got their hand out like this right here right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the ones of us that just wake up and just go to work and just be okay. Well, we got to end up prospering. Yeah. You got to think about it a little bit different way than what social media and, yeah. and, and, and big corporations want you to think. So do you have any contacts with uh, like Hanku or what's your tire company that's after you? Uh, General tire. Do you think we can do, you know, how they have like the, the Michelin, the Michelin star restaurants. Yeah. Could we, could we do like a, a cooking show with us where it's like, General Tire, like you know what I mean. Like I'm one star G General Tire, one star General Tire instead, <laughs> instead of Michelin. Yeah. Okay. Restaurants down here on the south is going to turn into General General Tire one stars. I, I, I'll talk to him. I'll talk to him about that because I have a cooking show coming next year too. Um, actually, I'm writing. We're writing a cookbook and then stuff like that. I'm trying to. Whenever I started making it big, one thing I didn't want to do was just I could have went and bought a Bentley. I could have went and bought you know anything I wanted to and just lavish. Did lifestyle. you window shop on the internet? To be honest. Oh, with you. I have like three yachts in my Amazon in my Amazon okay. cart right now, okay. but I, I can't pull the trigger. I can't afford that. You know, it, not, yet. It, it, not yet. But it's one of them deals where whenever I started making it, I didn't want to just be a, a one hit wonder and be gone. So I took my money and I scattered it. Like I own seven businesses now. Uh, like I do the uh, the charter. I have a charter business out of, out of Biloxi for inshore charters. And we give a 30% discount to anybody who is mentally handicapped. What's the name of it? Yeah, we plug here. We uh, plug. It's Triple B uh, Inshore Charters. Triple B Inshore Charters. Yeah. Look them up. It's, just, it's BBB Inshore Charters. We, uh, we have a Facebook page. Um, anybody who's mentally handicapped, who is physically handicapped, a war veteran or anything like that, 30% off immediately. And I, I've, like, I think I've done it twice so far. It's like I, I don't have anything to do that day. And they book during the week or something like that. And I'm in town. I'll go hop on the boat with them. I'll go fishing with them. You know, what I'm saying it, 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 it's a real special thing. I believe that everybody deserves a chance to fish. So that so when did you start that? I started that in December of last year. It actually just uh, we went live with it in March, but 
I started doing the uh, I started doing the like the the prep work. I went and got the boat, and I went, went got a captain, Hunter Weinberg, a uh, boy I went to school with. All he's ever wanted to be is a, is a captain. He's right. so invested. What kind in of boat mission. we talking here? Twenty six foot blackjack. I got, I, wow. I, yeah, like like I like I I splurged a little bit on the boat. That's a good looking boat. It is, and it rides smooth, and it has a big enough back deck. We have a lot of handicapped people who want to come, like on wheelchairs and stuff yeah. like that, and no other charter boats will take them. They for the liability. Well, I pay the added insurance, and we bought the boat that has a back deck where we have uh, wheelchair anchors in the back, and we just we anchor them down. Hunter, uh, Captain Hunter, he just takes them out there, puts, puts he baits them for them, throws it out there. They reel it in. He unhooks it. No danger, no nothing. Back to the uh, back to the boat launch, which we don't launch and uh, launch our boat. We partnered with Pelican Point, yeah, out of Biloxi. Oh, Michael B. That's yeah. it. Oh, Michael B. And he um he uh he kind of got he he put more into it than what I thought he was going to. I, I asked him if I could run a charter business out of there. I told him about the mission. He said, "Don't worry about that. If you need somebody getting help off the boat." We'll help you. And I think, okay, maybe, you know, one or two people. No. When 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 Cap pulls in there and we got somebody in a wheelchair, somebody, everybody at Pelican Point, all 10 people that work there. There's a bag of staff out there, man. They it, take care of it. It is. They come to the boat. There's five people lifting up this wheelchair, making sure it sets on the dock. I mean, it, it's just, it, it's a gr- it's a great thing. It, it's one of it's one of my uh, best achievements that I, I've been able to do. So that, that is, you're killing it with that because that is different. I got to see the setup, though. I need to see how you got the hooks. There's probably there's, there's probably a, pay, a picture of the boat on the Facebook page. Gary, do you think we find that? So when you y'all talk about Michael, just in my head, I just remember Michael used to have a, a Z71 mm-hmm. uh, square body, and he used to have a, a intercom or a speaker walkie talk. Like he would literally. We, I remember going to Molly Molly's house, parents' house, and I remember him when he first got the setup. He'd go. Any kind of party we threw, mm-hmm. he would run around in his truck and he'd stay on that mic. Oh, he had a CB with CB, PA. Yes, yeah, CB, CB with, with a PA. PA and he yep. would just go around and you'd hear him scream, like you know, he'd make all kinds of sounds. But yeah, yeah, that's, yeah there, there's a boat right there. That's before it got it got the uh, decals and stuff on it. But I don't think we have one of the back deck on it. I know we got some pictures and stuff like that, like some fish people people are caught and stuff like that. But like I said, I mean, we we we're doing we're doing really well with that type of thing. I mean, they go out there, they catch white trout. There's a little bit of the back deck right there. We take any kind of mentally handicapped children, all that stuff discounted. I mean, I'm trying to make it possible for them. Yeah, I, I, I bought a boat that was comfortable for them. That's what's up, man. It's a beautiful boat. Oh, it's it, it's a dream. Yeah, we clean all your fish for it. We package it for you. And if you, the kid or the handicapped person is not able to cast or anything like that, we you got all, them covered. We got them covered. So, Cap- cool. Captain Hunter takes care of them. So it's Hunter right there too. Uh, yeah, he says we need to frame him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> go Hunter, go Hunter. <laughs> hey man, you gotta ask for it. Bro. Okay, Hunter, I need you to I need you to do a lot more charters before we buy frame it, buddy. All right, Ricky Handler says uh, we wants to see a local show. What uh, you got anything like that in store for? So we've been kind of keeping it under wraps. Um, we we have I have so many shows this year, and I would like to at least hit the woods a little bit. But in the off season, it's coming up, man. It, it is. It, it starts like Saturday. Did you do the velvet hunt? No, I was out of town. Oh, I was, I I was at a show. Um, two years ago, Ricky Handler called me up. He said, "Hey Zach, you you want to be a uh, you want to be a celebrity judge down here at the uh, Moose Lodge at Crawfish? The, the Crawfish yeah, yeah, Jordan. Yeah, 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 exactly. I'm glad to know we're in the same we're the same category. Okay, right. let me tell y'all something about that. <laughs> Don't do it because I love crawfish more than anything in this world. There's like 40 plates of crawfish that come yeah. by, and like the first three, you eat way too many, or they get you know it's too much salt or jalapeno, like it's too hot. Yes, it, it was fun. It was it, me and me and Uncle Ronnie did it, and um, but we uh. So I did that. And I was talking to him. I was like, "Look, if I ever do a show in Biloxi, I owe you the first show." Because he gave me he gave me a chance. All right. So maybe in the off season, I'm not going. Probably early February, late January, something like that. We might throw one at the Moose Lodge and Jive. I, owe oh, that I love to it. I love okay. it. Okay, I like we that a lot. Come, we want to come for sure. Yeah, we uh got hooked up with uh Matt McDonald and Michelle at the Coliseum. So they yeah. every year for the Crawfish Fest, they hire us really to run around, just interview, goof off. That's and, awesome. And we did an appearance. Can y'all get me a spot to put my triple B booth down there? Maybe. Yeah, yeah let's talk to Matt. Yeah, y- y'all, need, y'all need to help me over that. But we, we got into, um, when you go see all the people, there's people from like New York cooking crawfish. Like the, these people come in for that. Yeah. It's like four or five grand is what they their prize is. Mm. But they have these husband and wife from all over the United States like come in to cook. Yeah. This is weird to see that. But like, then there's some people down here, guys, you need to slow down on the salt. Slow down on salt. Here's the thing. Like, 
people other other places do crawfish. They they don't they do it wrong. Yeah, there's no salt. They, they, there's no salt. You have to have some salt. Like I, we were out in Houston with Jesse, and he was like, "Man, we got to go eat crawfish. We got the best crawfish." Right? I'm like, "Hold the fuck up, rascal!" Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm from crawfish country. He's like, "No, man, we got to go." And he takes me to this place, and it's like. It's like forty five dollars for like three pounds of boiled crawfish, mm, right? Sounds great. It's it's <laughs> awesome, and they did it all wrong. Like there was no seasoning in the meat. They put the boiled crawfish that they boiled in like water, like Purina, into a bag, and just and put a bunch of seasoning in with it, and just it's, shook it's it called Houston style. Okay, well they can fuck off with that. That's just terrible. It it, it really is. It, it like I, I'm I'm, yeah, I'm I'm not a fan of it either. Well, it gets all over your hands and I, shit. I'm a fan. It gets all over your Are clothes. You, what are you eating? The shell? No, the taste of tails. Uh, they do it, but they don't boil it just they, in water. No, they, they, they actually, actually do. They have seasoning. I'm yeah. talking. This was boiled okay, in like yeah. Aquafina. Yeah, shout out to taste tails because like I will fuck up some crawfish at taste tails. Dude, I, the, mine's knuckleheads. Dude, I'll fuck up. Knuckleheads. Oh no, no, yeah, but that and we're talking about the Houston style. Oh yeah, the they don't. I don't. Do they do regular there? Yeah, I think they do. Yeah, they do whatever you want them. But knuckleheads with Heath, yeah, that's fucking. That's no brainer. Yeah, <laughs> but um, it's just God. You go all over the nation, you eat all this different food and shit, and you just really makes you appreciate. You know what? I've been watching videos on people eating. Uh, they've been like doing the soft shell crawfish and eating the whole crawfish now. Yeah, I'm that's not a weird. Player. I'm yeah. not. I'm not a player. I'm not have you ever done that way. before? No, I eat soft shell crabs on po' boys. Yeah, fire. Well, right down the road, uh, one of my uh, right down the road, we have a uh, coon. Uh, he is. Uh, he does the sh- dry shrimp. Oh yeah, the. That's his really guys. That's his name. Out, dehydrated. That's his dehydrated name, coon. Uh, but he does dry shrimp. It's Vietnamese. All right, Zach. What's like the most country ass thing that you eat that you like? Uh, what you would claim? Oh, that's. I'm like I'm like really big into frog legs. I am. I okay. just I fuck with them so hard. It, it's it's almost a sickness, and I can't eat them because I eat too many of them. How but, often are we talking? Like once uh, a no, month? No, probably like, like I have to limit myself like three times a year. I, I really do because I make myself sick on them because it's like a. If you ever have one, yeah. Okay, they're like chicken wings, but with no fucking gristle. Yeah, it it, it, it it's it's fantastic. I like that. Do you and, go frogging? Yes. Well, I mean, I have two ponds out back in my house that I can get my fix off of. I, I really can't. How many are you talking in a night? Like, like eighty. Oh God. Ugh. Like it, like it, like it, 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 it's fan, it's fantastic. He has Frog. eighty frogs. Yeah. Well, you like, fry them or you bake them? Air fry, bro. Air fry. He- healthy. Air fryer. Healthy. Yes. You know, I did the other day on the air fryer. I did uh, old food, like Emily got me a burger. Yeah. And I put it in the air fryer for the first time. Like, like a recycled burger, yeah. Like the fries, leftovers. yeah. The fries are soggy. Yeah, the left, burger. dude. Air fryer kills leftovers. It's, oh, it's a game changer. Dude, and I, I turned it on for t- like uh, I think four minutes. Yeah, and it was so good. I mean, it, I was like, you know what? From now on, babe, I don't care if it's four o'clock and I show up at home at seven or eight. I'm ready for some leftovers because, like, I put an air fryer and it was probably better than. That's how I am with pizza. Like I, my weakness is fucking pizza. Like Sarducci's down in Gulfport. Have y'all ate there yet? No. no. <laughs> okay, y'all are missing the fuck. Where's out. it at? It's in downtown Gulfport, dude. It's like right next to Kelly's. Okay. Okay. The bar. And and it is the there, there is no comparison to pizza. Like I was a Brooklyn's dude for a long time down on in Hardy Court. But no, Sarducci's makes their own sauce completely pan. I have to go check this out. You have to go do this and you have to call me and just tell me thank right. you. Right. But uh I, I will fuck that place up and I always order way too much pizza. And I realized like three months ago that if you put it in the air fryer, it tastes exactly it the takes same. It takes it back to oh. day one quality. It takes it right back to like fresh out the oven. So is it like one of them? Uh, so one of my favorites is uh, Tailgaters. They have the uh, stone oven pizza. Mm-hmm. Okay. They have that. Uh, but if you're going there, I'm going to give you a pro tip pan style. It's not like super. Chicago yeah, I don't want to go. I, I don't want to do dish. No, no, no. It's just pan style. It's, it's think Papa John's epic stuff crust meets. Brooklyn thin crust. It's okay. like right in the okay. middle. It's, it, it hit the sweet spot. And I'm a big fan. Of, I'm a big fan of like uh, like sweet marinara sauces and shit. Gotta have some good pie. You, you get you get the good pie. Like, like Dave Portnoy, the El President. Yeah, one there. bite. The one bite, dude. dude I, I'm obsessed with that shit. Like I, I've been like messaging him. Like he, I figure I got two point something million followers. He would message me back. I'm like, come to fucking Sarducci's. I'll meet you. <laughs> I will meet you there. <laughs> when do they open? Like I don't know. Like every day. So how uh, how long have they been in business? Oh, they've been in business like a year. Okay, okay yeah. so they're fairly new. Then. Yeah, they're they're fairly new, but they changed the game. It, it they're, 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 there is no comparison. Well, you guys go check it out. We're gonna go check it out. I want I want to 
I'm about my pie too, man. But um, Marcos is the new game changer over in Biloxi by my house. That's mm-hmm. that's new, Mar- that's, and it's not new. They've had it forever. Yeah, but it's new to us. And you know what I miss? Uh, I, I'm sure y'all remember it. A lot of people won't. You remember Fox's Pizza? They yeah, used, they, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, they used to have the big one challenge where, like, you can go. Did there. you ever do that? Yes, I did. I failed miserably. Did you? I was, was, was it you and one other person? Yeah, it was and- me and my buddy, and we went in there, and I'm like, okay, we can fucking do this. Like, we're we're college athletes. We can fuck this up. We went in there, and you got to choose two toppings, right? So I'm like, all right, pepperoni. Both. Real thin, just pepperoni. He looks at me, he's like, Swedish meatballs. Like this motherfucker's got meatballs on his fucking sub like this big. They comes out of the uh, out of the oven. They bring it to you. You can't stand up. You can't throw up. You have one hour to eat this pizza. And it's big. Like it's how big? Can it's like it's like a forty inch. Like yeah. like it it it's it's gargantuan. It is it's like sixty bucks. And that was the one right by uh, Hops. Uh, Pops. Pops. Yeah, the, right? custard, the custard store. They had the bacon cheeseburger. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. That, yeah. Was yeah. It. that was it. And uh, so he sets it down on the table, and the timer starts from like the minute you take the first bite. They set this fucking pizza down and it's still bubbling. Like I can see the bubbles coming through yeah. the fucking cheese. He just picks it up and just it, it just starts fucking. He burns the roof of his mouth. He's fuck like he can't even eat anymore because like the skin is literally like bleeding inside of it. He did that on purpose. A hundred percent. So we ate pizza. We brought it back to our dorm and we ate pizza for like the next three fucking weeks. Like it, it, it we probably could have done it. No, nah, we we it, it, that it, place it, was good. It was good. And they had the fucking they they were like the first people to change the game with the subs. You know, say like you could go in there and get the subs, like the yeah. oven roasted subs and shit. I fuck with that. That guy used to, that guy that owned it, always come out and would shake your hand and hang out. I'm a big fan of that shit. I like. Okay, my favorite place on the coast to eat by far. There is no comparison. Is Fields, not the one in Biloxi. Okay, it, it's too new. They're still figuring shit out. The one in Bay St. Louis. I have a company uh, dinner party every Christmas. I take everybody in my company out. How many out employees do you have? Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> we talking like total? Like yeah, everybody? all out of together. If you include the racetrack, like seventy. Oh shit! Yeah, but if you include just Triple B and the people that that I hire part time to come help me, probably eighteen to twenty. That's a good bit. It, it is, and we take them over there. And I, it's one time a year. They don't ask me for anything. They're always there when I need them. I take them to the fields. They have this steak. They call it the stacker. It's a twelve ounce filet mignon, which is hard to find. Yeah, somebody just this big around. Yeah. It's sitting on top of a crab cake. It's not a crab cake. It is lump crab meat with a little bit of crumb stone in it, a pound of it. On top mm. of that, they have. Oh god. On top of that, they have five jumbo barbecued shrimp. On top of that, they got four things of steamed asparagus, and they cover the whole thing in a crawfish creole sauce. It is by far the best fucking thing. And Field, the guy that owns it, I actually work out with him at the gym now. I didn't at the time. But he um he will come out there if he's there and go to every table and talk to you. That means Absolutely. The, world, the world to me. I mean, you got to set a good, uh, positive, I guess, environment for your guests. Well, you he would come back and have a good ambiance. And- Before I ever knew him, he would come up and he would be like, did y'all like the food? Is there anything we need to worry? He, he's wanting to improve. Right. And that's the same. I, I, I admire that, especially in the restaurant business. So as the one to improve, you're you're on tour now with these guys. Are you learning from them? Jesse, uh, my opener, believe it or not, I should be opening for him. I'll, I'll be the first one to tell you he's way better at it as far as comedian goes. He's open for Eddie Griffin. He's open for all these people. He, from the day one, took me underneath his wing. He understands that they're there for, to see me because of my following and my face and, and my presence and stuff like that. But like he would watch my show. He films the whole show. He goes home. He clips it. He makes notes. And he sends me like a document. He's like, this is what you need to work on. Or try so to. So like you're in college all over again. Exactly. Like, 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 like he sends me like homework home. And like the next time I'll go on stage and I'll do what he tells me. He's like, okay, that didn't work. Go back to your original <laughs> show. But, but we're going to try this this time. And he's got it now. We're pretty much dialed in now. And in, in my success means his success. He's not, t- he's not trying to d- diminish me where everybody's like, Oh, your opener's funnier than you are. He's not that. He's not that guy. He's the guy that really wants to like help you, and it, it, he wants us all to grow together. And that, that, that's rare in today's in today's time. Yeah, when I mean, everybody eats, I say you know success breeds success. It it, it you does want to be around people that are sharp and then, you know. And you make enemies at this too. Yeah, in, in my business, you so make, let's go into it right now. Let's start with the stalkers first. How many stalkers do you have? A bunch. 
It, like, like I, I really, I had like defined stalker. Like, we want your hair. We want to wear your skin. Yeah, <laughs> I, or, I don't think it's quite to that point yet. But there is a lot of like overweight middle aged white women that want to put me on their mantle. They want to have your babies. Yeah, remember that movie? Like the past was like that. Yeah. Okay. I got like some of the best messages I get that I'll, I'll be going through my my messenger stuff like that. I get bored. I just start scrolling, yeah. and it's like it, the, the, some of the shit that they want. I got to tell you this fucking story. This is a perfect example. Okay, okay. The, the, this just happened in Fort Walton a couple weeks ago. So I'm down there doing a show in Fort Walton. We're at a place called the Bo- the Block, and it's like a country swing dancing bar. But they take the, they took the whole thing and they um and, and they turn it into a comedy club. We're down there, and there's this girl that I'm on stage, right? Jesse's done went, Dustin's done went, I'm on stage. And I can look over to the right, and I can see this girl. And you can just tell by the look in her eyes that she's not there for the fucking comedy show. She's, no. she's really not. You need a beer? <laughs> <laughs> she's there for you. She is. And it's very uncomfortable because my girl's there. Good throw. And, yeah, I can be <laughs> minus. <laughs> Fuck you, Zach. <laughs> and so I'm doing my set and everything. And I go back into the uh, into the green room, and I, I like to chill out for like ten minutes after a show, what, just just kind of get my mind. What's back. in the green room though? Like snacks? Just I'm big on like I like lunchables. I'll be, I'll be dead ass honestly. Okay. <laughs> so like solid. If you want to give me like a grown up lunch, like a charcuterie yeah. board, I fuck that up. Right, let's go back to the green room then. <laughs> <laughs> so so I go in the green room, I'm chilling out, and I come out to go do meet and greets, which is in another building. I go do my meet and greets. And I'm coming back in, and she's like at the bottom of the stairs, right by the green room. Like, come here, come here, come here. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing that. My girl's here, you know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm like, I, 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 I dip off into the green room, but she grabs Uncle Ronnie, and she's like, Uncle Ronnie, come here. And she, <laughs> she, uh, so he goes down there. He, he's telling her like all of, of she's telling him all of the stuff that she wants to do to me in the green room. <laughs> Uncle Ronnie's such a fucktard. Like he's like. Maybe I should send him in there, you know, say just to fuck with me because my girl's there, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Just get me in trouble. And it turns out that earlier in the show, my mom had walked side stage and she was taking pictures for the, for like our, our Instagram and stuff like that. And this woman told my mom, she's like, I'm Zach's biggest fan. My mom's like, no, you're not. I promise you, you're not, you're not his biggest fan. She goes, oh no, I am. I've been with him since day one. And my mom's like, I promise you, darling, you're, you're not, you're not his biggest fan. She goes, oh yeah, I'm fitting to suck his dick in the, in the green room. <laughs> <laughs> and my mom's like, and my mom's like super protective over me, especially with my woman now because she she absolutely yeah, loves her grandbabies. Yeah, that's it. She loves she loves the lady, the girl I'm with now. They're like best friends, and um, she looks over her. She goes, "Bitch, I've been with this man since birth. I birthed his big ass. You little trashy ass ain't touching him, okay?" And so I, I I'm like still on stage at the time, so I run into the green room after meet and greets. This woman goes up to uh, Jesse and Dustin's like wives and starts talking about all the shit that she wants to do to me in the green room. Well, obviously we're all one big happy family. They run and go tell my girl. Well, she's there. Oh, she's at. Oh, yeah, yeah, my so girl. They come to fisticuffs or what? No, my girl's not really a fighter as much as she is. She just likes to make herself present and see how I'm going to react yeah. in the situation. Do you have her tattooed on you anywhere? No. Zero tattoos. I'm just curious. Zero tattoos. I'm thinking about it though. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like she would find it funny. I feel like her mom would like disown me. I'll be honest with you. If Emily, my Emily down, like my Emily, yeah. if she wanted me to tattoo her name, I'd do it. I mean, I mean, if my hundred percent would do it. If my girl wanted like, 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 I would do a portrait of her face. I mean, I'm right here. I, I, yeah. I, I got a scar from cancer. If you just want to put her face right here, <laughs> okay. I'll be like, baby, I'm carrying your love with me. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm a George Strait song. That's right. That's right. Might do a face tattoo. So, so Uncle Ronnie, is that it? Uncle Ronnie. Can we Uncle find Ronnie. this guy? Is he, I, getting, is he getting some love out of all this or what? I the, mean, he's he's what? Your tour manager? What, is, what would you call his he's role? He's my transportator. Transportator. Yeah, that, okay. that's his word that, that, he, that he came up with. And look, so his wife, Mimi, w- will not let him have a Facebook. He can't have a YouTube. He can't have yeah, a face. Can we no, find he's a photo an invisible of this guy? Man. No, he's but, an invisible but here, man. Here's the thing. We made a secret TikTok. <laughs> we, we did. You gotta look up Uncle Dot Ronnie Official. Okay, so it's it, out there. You it, just it, let the cat out of the bag. Yeah, it, it, it's out there now. You gotta look up Uncle Dot Ronnie. I kind of Official. Imagine is he a guy from uh, Dukes of Hazard? Is he Uncle Jesse? Uh, no, he's like he's more like a slender type type dude. He's just, he's just an idiot. 
he's the type of guy that he doesn't need a lot of information. He just needs to know what time we're leaving. Like, yeah. like, like we're transportator. He's a transportator. That's what we're at the shows and shit. And somebody asked him, like, what do you do? He goes, I'm a transportator for that fat fuck over there. <laughs> I'm the reason this whole show goes on. Right like, on. Yeah. No, he, he got like, we bought, we were at Hazard Fest and we were there for 11 minutes. We bought a $1,200 motorized cooler. So we could ride it around. You could just ride How it around. How fast it go? 27 miles an hour. Holy shit. I mean, it fucking rolls. Like, so y'all need to come do a video at the house. Well, I got like a little racetrack okay. in my yard. Yeah, yeah, I want yeah. a video of us in the back seat while he's doing a rant. Yeah. <laughs> be and, just be like, <laughs> the peanut gallery. yeah. Okay. Next, next time I, I'm like, I get Let really fired up about Let something. I'll just hit y'all up and I just swing by. Dude, I just, get in the fucking back seat. I want to hear that. Cause I mean, a lot of stuff you, the topics you hit on and you have so many videos, but I mean, they, they're relatable. Like people can under, like relate to it. Yeah, relatability sells. That that's the main thing that, that a lot of people tell me is like that the reason they watch me. I'm not that fucking funny, believe me. I, I I'm not. I just talk about real shit. Yeah, and that's what like no filter, no filter. Well, a little bit of filter now because of just community guidelines and stuff yeah. like that. Community guidelines. Have you been canceled? Yeah, or they tried to cancel you. Yeah, they took my whole page now. They brought it back. They yeah. didn't want to pay me. They say really you can't yeah. cancel someone who's self made. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? It, it's. If they give it to you, then they can take it away. Exactly. And that's the reason that I have the following that I have, because they'll come up to the show and they'll be like, dude, you're funny as shit, but that's not why I follow you. I follow you because you got me through some hard times. You talk about the shit that nobody else wants to talk about. And I'm really good friends with Adam. I call him Adam. Ginger Billy. Have y'all ever seen Yeah, Yeah, yeah. that dude's hilarious. Okay, yeah. Ginger is a really good friend of mine. I talk to him all the time. And he his version of doing comedy worked for him it would not work for me like he's he's a character he is he, he, he if you think for one second he's acting like that in, in public it's not happening ginger billy is one of the best businessmen i've ever met in my life but say he's in line at the bank and somebody comes up to him and was like hey ginger billy he's got to snap into that <laughs> he's got to snap into that right i can't do that like I'm talking to you, like like who I am on 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 video is the same person I am in real life. If you see me at the bank or at Burger King or something like that, come say, "Are you Zach Russian?" Like, absolutely, buddy. What's up? I can talk to you normal. I can't do what he does. I wish I could do what he does. I'd be way more famous if I could do what he does. I can't snap into character like that. I don't have a character. My like labor the cable guy. He's not. Larry His name's Dan. Guy. Yeah, <laughs> you know, what I'm he's from Nebraska. He's not even southern. He throws the hot dogs out of the Nebraska games. He, he just, and all of that, he lives in Florida now. Like I thought, I talked to him on the phone and he, he, he's a businessman. He plays. Does he talk car- like country or no? no, not at all. That's why he's able to do them accents in, in his skit and stuff like that. All right. Is Zach rushing on cameo and can you do cameo appearances for people? No, I'm not doing. Would cameo. you? Would you? Yes, I would. I would. I don't. If I did cameo, if I did, I, I thought about it a couple of times. I would donate the money to my charities. That's a good. I'm not gonna get. I'm not taking money for wishing somebody a happy birthday. Right. It, 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 it's I feel like that. you'd be a slave to it though. Like at the end of the day, you'd wake up and you'd have 1,500 happy birthdays to send out. And, and and that's one of the reasons I haven't done it. Now, when I was when I was smaller, like 100,000 followers or 50,000 followers, 100 percent do it. Maybe one a week, three a week, something like that. If I was do cameo now, it would be it would be insane. I'm just wait 20 years. And yeah. It, it, when nobody gives a fuck about me anymore, it'd be like one old woman, like in her walker. Like, I really want to get, have I'm going to suck that's his dick in the green room. In the green room. <laughs> I mean, fucking, the bitch's name was Cassie. Okay. And that's of like, course a, it was. That's, that's a running joke. Is, like, it, is it spelled with a K or that was with a C? Don't be a Cassie. Don't be a Cassie. Don't, don't be a Cassie. That needs to be the new thing. I'm going to make that trending. How don't, many don't time, be a Cassie. Like, it, like how many numbers do you change in a year? I don't, I refuse to change my phone number. I've had the same number since, like, me and Gary were talking about it. I, I, saw, I saw him the other day at the Saints game. He's like, you still got the same number from high school? I was like, fuck yeah, dude. I had the easiest number in the world to remember what we're not talking Don't about. Don't put it out. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not putting it out. But Almost I, tricked him into it, guys. I, I, I'm like, I, I refuse to get rid of my phone. What do you think social media is going to go in 10 years? Like, so, let's say five years. Have you, have you meted? Meted? Have you been in the meta? What the fuck the is the meta? We got, we got like we got like three or four headsets. And we like we have so our, we go into this the podcast club. in the metaverse. This is where we got our first. There is a comic stand-up. club in there. We went into the metaverse. It's and like an art of our artificial. It's your boy it's like, Zuckerberg, dude. And yeah, okay, you, fuck you, him too. You need to All get right? in on this. Well, there's a soapstone uh, comedy club that uh, Aaron owns, and now I'm friends with them. We're friends with them on the metaverse. 
but he has this comedy club where you can do shows. Yeah. Yeah. And build your brand. If you don't have a brand, it's a, I guess there's actually people that do have brands in there. We've actually had. So, uh, so like, is it real? Yeah. yeah. It's real. Like it's, it's real meta. It's real. Well, like a like video game. When we finish, wrap this up, we'll, yeah. we'll plug it in and, and let you go in there and just see if. Is it like VR? It's yeah, VR. It's VR. So it's not real. It is real, kind of. No, it's not. I mean, kind of. It's, it you is, die in not. there? Yes. Yeah, Do you come sure. back? I don't know yet. I, you haven't you died should try. Ne- ne- next time an artificial train comes, just jump in front of it, see what the fuck happens. I don't know. Eventually, once they put the suits, you, you might be able die. to. I'm I've not. seen some videos of people <laughs> putting them on and like running into the walls and stuff. Like that's pretty. Yeah. Cool. This reminds me of that uh, that that movie with uh, uh, surrogates. Have you ever have you ever seen that? It's basically what you're describing, you surrogates. No, I haven't you, seen. You it. need to go watch. So, a, it's a, it's a um, Bruce Willis movie. So two of the movies that I go for is Ready Player One is what it's like, and then Idiocracy. They're the same. I haven't seen either one of those. Idiocracy? No. You can check them out. They're watch good. them when you get home. Okay. Idiocracy. I watch that about the same time you watch Eight Seconds. I have. Okay. Blue Perry. He's so dreamy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually gave uh, that. I had the DVD and I gave it away to a guy that uh, definitely wanted more than me. The eight seconds. All right, I got. I got a question for y'all. Nobody right, asked me right. a question. Greatest movie of all time. You get one. That's hard. It, it is hard. hard. No, no, um, because it goes like nostalgia. Like before, I could appreciate writing. I had a great movie, mm-hmm. and once I appreciated writing. So for me, right off the bat, Green Street Hooligans. Really? Yep. That's okay. Cool. Um, I'm gonna go with one of my all-time favorites, and it's The Big Lebowski. That's a respectable answer. Like, okay. For, by the way, that movie's about absolutely nothing, dude, and that's what I love about it. Okay, yeah. I'm going. I'm going Roadhouse. Roadhouse. That's pretty R- dope. Roadhouse. They got a new Solid one coming answer. out. I think. Yeah, it's not. It's not going to have Pete Swayze in it though. So no. I'm, I'm not. He ripped his throat. He ripped the throat out. Yeah, he ripped uh, the throat he, out. He was riding the big the, red tip. The boot knife is what did it for me. Do you have a boot knife? A buoy knife? No, a boot no, knife. knife. Oh, no. In your no, shoes. No, you could, no, I, don't, I probably need somebody. one. Yeah, yeah. I had this conversation the other day with Uncle Ronnie. We was on the road. You spent 17 hours on the road with people. You have all kind of crazy conversations. It, yeah. it, it, it's, fuck, it, it is. You, you just talk about random shit. And he, he, his movie choice bothers me for the fact that the movie wasn't that great. It just got a lot of press. And it's the one with uh, Ben Affleck, Matt Dill, uh but the one where he's a genius. Hold on, I'm having a brain. Goodwill Hunting. Goodwill Hunting. You know, say like, I just I don't feel like that. Like that is it's, that movie is in the same category to me as like the uh, Indiana Jones movie, yeah. where it just got a lot of hype. It's a fucking terrible movie. Right. It really is because here's the thing. Any y'all seen Indiana Jones? Yeah. yeah. Okay. He played zero part in that movie. If he's not there, okay, they still find the ark. They still open it. And they all still. So, die. what do you think about Nicolas Cage and National Treasure? Then? Okay, yeah. Okay. Okay. That's just informational. Okay. That, that's like that's like the crocodile hunter of history. <laughs> okay. it, it, all of them movies are. I learned more about history from them two fucking movies. Than I did it throughout the entire high school experience. So we can keep him. We can keep. We National, can keep Nicolas Cage, Cage. Ma- mainly on. for like gone in sixty seconds. But National Treasure can hang out there. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm with you on that. We'll, we'll do that. All right. Favorite Jim Carrey movie. Grinch. The Grinch. The Grinch. The, the, there will never be anybody touch his performance. Of I'm the with Grinch. I will. I will say Grinch too. See, yeah. my, my favorite was me, myself, and Irene, which was a little off color. It is, but at the same time, do you realize how aggravating that movie had to be for her, for, for him oh, to yeah. do it? Yeah, yeah, for yeah. him to snap into different characters and shit like that. <laughs> I right. think he had a he had a pretty good range then. Now not so much. All right. Well, let's go into your favorite TV show. Yeah. What's what's Zach Russian watching these days? Okay. Oh, Yellowstone. <laughs> I'm I, 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 I'm I'm a big fan of Yellowstone. I don't um, I, I I'm not gonna say that's my favorite. The same way that uh, Stranger Things, I fuck with Stranger Things a, a lot, but it's not my favorite. If I had to go with like greatest series of all time, I'm going Sons of Anarchy. Okay. S O A. S O A. Every time I just I quit watching it when they killed the guy from Bertier. <laughs> from so you watched you, you made like yeah. season five yeah right? yeah yeah you don't kill my favorite character i'm out sons of, sons of anarchy is a really a really good show and I, and I can go down a rabbit hole on netflix like it ain't nothing like I, I, how long does it take you to select a, a, a movie or tv show it takes me like three hours <laughs> well to be honest with you if it's not in my recommended for you yeah. i just switch over and I, this is like the this is this is my guilty pleasure this is the one that i've a lot of not, nobody really knows about me I'm obsessed with nature documentaries. 
And I don't know why, because I'm never going to these places. Like, I don't need to know that a brown mamba can kill you faster than a black mamba. Is I don't need true. To, uh, yeah. Okay. Like, but I, you got to have the the document. I got to have uh, the documentation. Like, I watched the British guy. Yeah, I, mean, I got I got to have like the narrator and all that shit. And like, I watched an entire, uh, basically a movie, like an hour long on puffins. Like, I know an insane amount. What is that? Of, it's what is just, that? Like it's a fluffy. No, it's like this little bird. It's like okay. this fucking big. And he, Garrett, can it, we find out what a puffy is? Puffin. puffin. Me, and, me and Garrett watched a, a documentary on Apple about dinosaurs. I gotta go pee pee. I'll be right back. It's, it's digitally enhanced dinosaurs, and like I'm sitting there watching it, and they filmed it like it's National Geographic shit. And yeah. like halfway through it, I look over at him and I'm like, "This isn't even real." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "They're speculating here." And Puffin, then, right okay, there. Okay, okay. This little fucking bird. Okay, they, they just they it's die. so cute. Yeah, they dive off of like 500 foot cliffs and just ass smack right into the water. And to just get, to get um, fish. Yeah, and they, they they just dive in for fish. It's ridiculous. I, it, I had no kind of reason at all to watch this, but I could not turn away. And that's like, probably the cute fluffiness of the that and uh, that and the, the uh, what was that? Norwals. You know what I'm talking about? The, uh, it, it's a seal with like a horn that comes out. Oh, of yeah, it. yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, they were an elf and they kill things. Yeah, know, they just they run into shit. Ram it. I was like, that's the unicorn of the sea. This is badass. I'm gonna watch this whole fucking documentary. It's a tooth. That's their tooth. I got into uh one I got was just a couple years ago. Deer hunting with birds. Deer hunting with birds. Yeah. So in other countries, people would have like these trained assassin falcons <laughs> and raise <laughs> talking them. about falconry. Yeah. Norwals. Yeah. yeah, them big motherfuckers. They're useless. And uh um, you know how pissed off I would be if I was one of them and I like speared this big ass red snapper that I've been to eat and it's just stuck on my tooth out there. It, and I somebody else it. got it. I'd be so fucking somebody up. else would come by and you have to punt and pass. <laughs> exactly. No, the uh but yeah, I guess is it falconry, but these just falconry. birds these birds are swooping down, scooping up 140 pound deer on like the side nothing. of mountains. Yeah, like it's nothing. And, and you watch that, you pull that up, and you get a little addicted into it. So. I will tell you all this because we're getting older and things change. Like when I was younger, I couldn't you couldn't get me to read a book. It just wasn't happening. I so, do read to me. Yeah, exactly. That I do like books on tape in yeah, my yeah. truck and shit. And I, if you're on the road for like seven hours, did you say tape? <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> okay. Hell books, yeah. on, books on iTunes. How about that? <laughs> you, you know what I mean. If y'all want to, if y'all want to get into something that will, it, it, it's right up our southerner alley. It talks about like hunting, fish, and stuff like that. You've got to get into this new series. They they're actually making a Netflix series about it, a Joe Pickett novel. It's about this game warden in Wyoming, and he has like twenty six books that this guy does, and he he makes a new one every year. I would literally sit there in my shooting house all winter long, me and Uncle Ronnie, and we read the entire series. It's unbelievable. Shit. It, it's unbelievable. They talk about, I mean, there's fucking, they're, 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 they're doing lines and shit off of like game warden tables and stuff like that. They're killing people. Like it, it, it's a legit show in a book. But they're writing it. Who writes it? Uh, CJ Box. Okay. Right, writes it. I, I'll, I'll say it in front. I actually have the collection. I'll just bring you, uh, I, I'll gift you. The one oh, yeah. tape for, for y'all. It's, it's on fucking tape. Okay. <laughs> we have to borrow someone's tape. Do you player. have tape in your like? I mean, I do. I have a tape. I've drive. Tape I, I, I daily drive a Ford Lightning. Okay, I do not. I don't even have a CD player in my truck. I, I have a six disc. Wow. It's got Friday Night Gigolos. It's got Little White. It's got uh Falls from Grace. Do you have any of the old mixtapes we used to make for our buddies? And like, yeah, like, we got the Pimp C. Yeah. Where you just ride it on the yeah, you just uh, ride it on the, the top of the disc. Well, I stole oh, it yeah. from one of our friends, Micah. Shout out to Micah Shepard. Uh, I still got his leather bound uh, CD case from school. You ain't getting that shit back. Bro. No, that, that, that's just name. <laughs> <for that>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got a lot of uh, I had like Third Eye Blind. Yeah, just but I just want to keep it nostalgic. I mean, bury it in the time. Do you have a tape player in yours? You got like, yeah. I think it's a rock and roll. I got, when I bought the Cadillac, I downloaded like a bunch of songs that had the word Cadillac in it. <laughs> you said and you could just a Cadillac roll. mix. Cadillac on twenty twos. There's a lot more Cadillac songs than I'd imagine. Well, Cadillac's not really cool to have anymore. No, it's not. No. 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 What, what was your first? Uh, what What was your first vehicle purchase when you knew you like you started growing up? Like you know, in your business, like making it like. I never bought a vehicle. Really? I didn't know. I like like I bought a new truck this year for a tour truck, but that was that was out of necessity. It wasn't like that. It wasn't anything I wanted. I bought a uh, twenty five hundred Black Widow. 
the Cummins. Yeah. The 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 Dodge. Is that the thing you pulled up in that we can hear? No, no, that's my work truck. I'm I'm in my work truck today. I, I got an old 2013 Dodge Ram, and it's just he's glass packs in the back. You of pulled it. up, and I was like, he's the here. house was shaking. <laughs> yeah, he's here. <laughs> yeah, well, you hit the gas in that one. You can roll coal. Have, in a lot it, of places. have you thought about? Did you ever window shop when you were like looking at cars? Though? Yeah, I did. I really wanted the um the Ram TRX, like their version of the Raptor. Right. I really wanted one, and then I just realized that I have no use for it, like at all. Oh yeah. Like if I, like if I was gonna buy something, and pay that much money for something, I'm just gonna buy like a like a demon or a Hellcat or something like that. So you're a Dodge guy. I'm a Dodge guy. Okay. I am. I I, I had Fords forever, and see this this is my take on the whole like industry. Chevy is very luxurious. They ride very they're very smooth and they're very dependable. Not a lot of power. You know they might they might pull a piece of paper. Dodge has all the power in the world, but they has one rough riding motherfucker unless you put like an extra 10 grand in suspension to get Fox 2.0 shocks and stuff like that. Ford is like right in the middle. Ford is luxurious, but it's also it, it's good ride and it, it all, it's got all the bells and whistles, but it's uh, it has some power. I'm just a Dodge guy. I always have been. I, I, I was ever since I could buy my Gotta have a Hemi. Yeah, I, I would love like my dream car is a 1969 Dodge Charger. I want one so you bad. You better get one now before they and drive it on the priceless. dirt track. Dude. I can't afford them. They're literally just like just make some more videos. I mean, Jordan in the back seat. Yeah, wait till the boom. We're done. Wait till that car like it happens and everybody goes electric and all of a sudden the cars drive themselves and you're like you have no control of a gas engine. Yeah, yeah. it's gonna happen. Yeah, and, I, I, and that car price is gonna go up because everybody's gonna be like, I just want gas. Dude, they're like 150 grand now for one that's not restored. Not restored. They weren't that much until they made the new Dukes of Hazard movie, and then they all jumped used, up. Yeah, 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 they all use them. And that was a uh, was that the Challenger and uh, Fast and Furious? It was. It was got a wheel in the Charger. That, that's so my dream truck was the Ford Lightning from the show because I seen I seen Fast and Furious in the movie theaters, like the first one. All of them? No, the first one. I, I think I did. You the movie theaters for the last one? No. No, I watched it went to space or something. Paul Water. Yeah. Yeah. But it had the lightning in it. So I got that's what I wanted. So I have a black Ford Lightning. Okay. Yeah. Like, but I'm I'm gonna have that forever. Like you're not getting rid of it. I got no awesome in it. Dude, I got my drug car at the house. I got a nineteen eighty six Monte Carlo SS. And that is it a dunk? Yes. How big are the rims? He's got a dunk. It, 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 How like, big are the rims? No, the, dude, I I got the stock racing rims on okay. it. Uh, I do. And it's just it's just I haven't changed anything. It's original. Like it has an eight track in it. That's dope. So we can listen to yeah. Tapes. One yeah. of our goals is for insurance company, uh, Golden Gulf Insurance Services, guys. If you need us, yeah. well, we has I'll a Cadillac. Work. We're gonna turn it and wrap it to a dump for like a like a. Promo. I think you should do like bring back the whole thing and just put like M and M's all over it. Great. It's gonna be that, but it's gonna be for the insurance. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I thought. Could that. you see like the Cadillac? I mean, could wrap? you imagine one with the uh, you know what is it? Bass bucks and mm, birds. birds. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I it's just same, same contact. I just wrapped a boat so. today. I mean, it's the same thing. So you know, about is it that, you have your own camo? I am licensed through. I have. I was in the middle of developing my own camo. There's way more that goes into that than what I originally thought. And uh, so I ended up signing. You with mean Moss. you don't just take a bunch of leaves and lay them over no. like a Toyota and Hold on. different? You colors? signed with Mossy Oak. I signed with Mossy Oak. Holy I did. Shit, you have uh, your own camo line. I do. I have my own camo. I have a uh, sixteen hundred camos to choose from, and I have three that are exclusive to me. Do you have a, is it signature with your, you have a signature series? Not yet, but it's, here, here's, here's how, like, you would think you just go out in the woods, right? And just point the camera at the ground and take a picture. That's not how that shit works. They, well, I went up to West Point and they did their, uh, like their tour, okay. took me through Mossy Oak and Inc. and all that type of stuff. They have like habitats that are growing inside of this building. Controlled habitat. Yeah. yeah. From like everything from like Alaska to like South Mississippi. Right. And they have a camera that goes around this room and it takes 3000 pictures a second for like days as the algae grows out as the as it does on top of it, as the leaves turn and grow and stuff like that until they and they look through the sitting there. There's, there's a guy that just sits there. And he just goes through pictures. Just checking until they find that paid the big bucks. Yeah. Until they find that one picture that is perfect. And then and then that's what they make into the camouflage. That's what uh, are they number one in the uh, in, when it comes to camo? Uh, are they number one? Oh, by far. There's no comparison. I don't hunt. Yeah, there's no comparison. So Toxie Hayes is who went, who owns Mossy Oak. He's from West Point, Mississippi. He said one camo pattern, one is one hundred and fifty thousand dollars of just 
labor, man hours of people going through pictures. That's crazy. It's insane. The amount. But how about that one camo print? How it makes much? fifteen million as soon as yeah, they release yeah, it. So you know? totally worth it. Oh yeah, they're, they're like a three point five billion dollar company. I mean, look at all the rednecks wear camo. Absolutely. Or or try to look at them. Try to look at you can't see them. <laughs> if you uh, do, ever people when people see you out and you're wearing like let's say a suit, do they like this is not you? If because you, you have to wear a suit when you go to weddings every now and then. I don't go to weddings, so you don't wear suits. <laughs> I've never been to a wedding. Not one. You have. No, I've never been to a wedding. <laughs> I got invited to like three of them, but I've never been to one. Do you have a suit? Yes. What does Zach Rushing look like in a suit versus j- ball cap? Uh, have you ever seen like the Adams family and like that big motherfucker walks in? Yeah. That's what I look like in a suit. It's not appealing. Like I'm begging. We get some custom suits, darling. Yeah, I, 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 I got to do something. Like I'm begging. I, I'm just going to put it out there that the woman I marry, please let me get married in blue jeans and a t-shirt. Yeah, I don't think she's gonna go for it, but I'm I'm like I'm I'm hoping for it. Play your cards right, man. Are you gonna be a crier? You think? No. Are you a crier? No. No. I cry. I cry on two occasions, and it's the dumbest shit ever. Yeah, that guy. That's me. (laughs) A little bit delayed, but I like I like the enthusiasm. Okay. (laughs) I cry on two occasions. Anytime I watch a YouTube video about a soldier coming home and surprising his family, fucking tears. That, that is a tear jerk. You know? I, can, I can't not cry. And the second one is the stupidest thing ever. But for some reason, anytime anybody gets a golden buzzer on America's Got Talent, I'm fucking weeping. <laughs> I have no <laughs> idea why, but I'm like, I'm like tearing up. Just that's just, talent. That's talent. <laughs> they, I don't, I know nothing about these people. Like they could be like murderers, and I'm like, they deserve it. Well, Zach, dude, tell everybody where they can find you. I know you got some handles and stuff. I do. You mean most of the time it's just under my name. Uh, okay. You look up Zach Rushing on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. With an H, not a K, guys. Yeah, yeah right. A, yeah, with an H. Okay. With an H. Keep that straight. Uh, TikTok is Zach Rushing Official. Same thing on Instagram. He's Talk. working on some dances. You guys go check him out. Yeah, we're going to go viral with a dance. I, it's like the next six months, I'm just dedicating to just coming up with You might get your dance on. And where can they get you for your tour dates? Uh, By your. Yeah, so um, it, on my Facebook page, I had the link for my for my link tree, and you just click there. It has all of my upcoming dates linked, and you can just choose which one you want to come to, to which one's closest to you. All right, guys. Hey, look, I appreciate this. Hopefully, we can get you and Uncle Ronnie on next. Yeah, if you we want, want you back Uncle, on. I want Uncle Ronnie. If you want Uncle Ronnie down here, let me know. I can make that part happen. two's got to have Uncle Ronnie. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Uncle Uncle Ronnie's coming to the okay. building. I'm in. All right, guys. Thank y'all so much. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, bro. Nate, October twenty second, uh, Pink Dress Run. Uh, go get your tickets, pickdressrun.com. All 100% of our money goes to Memorial Hustle Foundation. I love you, Mom. Yeah, thank y'all for tuning in. Appreciate it, y'all. See y'all later. And love you, guys.